Hello. 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 Am I talking to myself? Can you hear me? You know, I it, it is amazing how frequently I forget to turn on my microphone and just jump into a call expecting to be, you know, <laughs> heard. But because of the way that my setup is here, it requires me to push one little tiny button, which <laughs> I always forget to press. Called the on switch. Yes. So can you hear me okay and everything? I hear you just fine. In fact, I hear you better than I have before. Is there a reason for that? There might be. I wonder. Gee. That'd be... Is this your first time getting to use said reason? Yes, it is first time getting to use said reason that I have you to thank for. You know, thank might be the wrong word. You might want to use blame. Blame seems blame. very appropriate. Yes, it does. Much more accurately fits my personality and general contribution to society. Yeah. After I said um, thank, I was like, yeah, that's not, that's a poor choice of words. I'm not sure how I should um, rephrase this, but you chose a very good choice. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. You sound like you're about to launch into something. Well, I was just curious, because I've never done this whole streaming thing before. Have we started recording or no? Oh, we, we began before my microphone was on. Oh, so we just have a couple of seconds of dead air. Oh, no, awesome. no. that you, you were quite clearly heard. Oh, yeah, I forgot about me talking. So, <laughs> with that said, hi, everyone, and Sasquatch, and whoever else may listen to this. I mean, it's pretty much Sasquatch friendly and you. Mm-hmm. So I'm basically just going to be talking to you and talking to myself at the same time. Is that what's happening? Um, basically, what's going to happen with this episode is that we're going to lose a, a listener. Unless Masters, which I doubt, well, I could be wrong, he might, chooses to listen. Uh, he might just be, just to find out if we say anything about him. That's, I mean, if I'm being honest, <laughs> <laughs> that's the main reason I listen. <laughs> yeah, we do have that kind of uh, niche level marketing for our podcast. It's not really a broad sort of content. It's just like, yeah, three people, that about do it. There's a reason we're not growing. <laughs> It's fun, though. Oh, yeah. That's the whole point. Just to have so, fun. You sound like you enjoyed your nap. I did. Probably, like, if... If um, if I had not forced myself to leave the comfort of my nice warm bed, I would have definitely slept until tomorrow. Which I'm <laughs> still questioning the wisdom in. Um... <laughs> Yeah, see, I tried to recover um, from my sleep deprivation today, and I failed miserably. Mm hmm Okay, so when I messaged you this morning... Yes. You... Okay, I said, what time do we record? And... You responded, and I said, let's see what time I wake up, and that was at 8.30 a.m., and you said, odd statement, but okay. Mm hmm Do you... Do you not remember what my weekend was consisting of? I remember part of it. There's, like, some sort of lock-in with young people or something to that effect? Yes, which is why I was sleep-deprived and attempted to catch up on sleep today, and, yeah, I... Basically was up until 3 a.m. and then slept periodically until 6 a.m. when I got up to stumble to the church's kitchen and make coffee. Are you drinking a Coke? I have just opened up an Arizona 
watermelon because it's one of those days. That. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just having... I was just waiting for that appropriate moment. I should have done that before my microphone went on. Oh, no. What is a Arizona... Um, what do you call it? Are you familiar Watermelon? with... Are you familiar with Arizona tea? Yes. Okay. They make some sort of watermelon drink. I don't know what it is. All I, I've never actually had one before today. But the place I was going to ha had a special in Arizona, which are already just like cheaper than dirt. And I walked in and they had a special on them. And I was just trying to get some, anything to drink. I'm like, well, I like Arizona. And so like, oh, well, I'll take advantage of the special and I'll get, you know, cheap ones. But they buy like four of them or something. And it's like, 60 cents a piece but like all the ones that I typically get they were out of and so they just had these watermelon things I'm like okay well I'll just grab those and I'm sure it won't be terrible pretty good I, I have no proper understanding of how to express to you what an Arizona watermelon is um, I'll, I'll, I'll I actually in fact I do I, I can send you a picture we'll kick this part of the uh, um the uh, podcast off. Yes, yes. It's uh it's it's unique. Um yep, there we go. And image and paste. Apparently it's Does fruit it... juice. I think. Interesting. Yeah. Does it taste like a watermelon jolly rancher? Uh, it's, it's actually sweeter and less tangy. Huh. It's also got, um, mango, kiwi, pineapple juice, vegetable juice for color. Hmm. I didn't know they made anything besides, like, tea. Interesting. I think this is, like, the one thing that they make that's not tea. Hmm. I mean, unless you, can't, unless you count Arnold Palmer's. Oh, wait. Whoa. Holy crap. Take it back. Apparently, they have all kinds of stuff. All right. We're going to... Are we going on, on an adventure? We're going on an adventure because we're going to figure out what's going on here. All right. So, Arizona. Do they have a website? Seatbelts, everyone. DrinkArizona.com. All right. Drinks. All drinks. All right, they got tea, they got green tea, they got Arnold Palmer's, they got juice. What is this? Okay. Those That's mixes. crazy. I mean, honestly, for a while, they kind of disappeared around here. You might see an Arnold Palmer in a raceway or something, um, convenience store, but that was about it for a while. We used to have peace tea. They vanished for a while, and they're making a comeback. All right. Let's see what we got here. We got juice. What does what qualifies as juice? Arnold Palmer's, okay. RX Energy, Golden Bear, Strawberry Lemonade. I've had those. Those are nice. Um. Oh, Strawberry Lemonade. Mucho Mango, Fruit Punch, the watermelon here. Uh, they got something called a Santa Fe, which they make in Arnold Palmer, raspberry lime, lemon, pink grapefruit, orange mango, sports drinks, a fruit punch, uh, extreme performance, uh, Arizona energy. That sounds healthy. Good brew, peach tea, green tea. Unsweet tea, that's an abomination. Lemon tea, sweet yeah. tea, that's right, sweet tea. Ooh, okay, know. wait, so I've heard that up north they don't actually have sweet tea, but y'all have sweet tea. Okay, so we have sweet, we have, generally, we do not have sweet tea. We have tea which has been sweetened. We do not have sweet tea. So if I went to McDonald's in Michigan, I 
would just order tea and get some sugar on the side? No, no. You can order sweet tea from McDonald's in Michigan. But you would find it to be very disappointing compared to the sweet tea you get in the South. Even at McDonald's. Although I will say McDonald's is one of the places in the North that does get it more correct than most other places. Um, I mean, it's just straight syrup. <laughs> there is no sweet tea. It's just syrup. I thought that was just what sweet tea was. Or is that just kind of a, a local thing? So the best sweet tea I've ever had, and I'll say this quite boldly, um, came from when I visited Kuya um, a couple years ago. And his grandmother had some sweet tea there, which was, I, I'm not actually sure how they got the sugar to be such a rich tea colored brown or kept it in a liquid form, but I'm pretty sure it was just sugar that we were somehow able to drink in a cold format. I'm very confused as to how it worked, but um, I think I became diabetic with every sip. Um <laughs> I mean, um, the, we do have a lot of diabetics around let's say here. The, the second highest, uh, you know, or second, you know, quote unquote, best sweet tea I've ever had would have probably been, unfortunately, uh, from Waffle House when I was in uh, South Carolina. That was a new experience for me. I think, but that one wasn't quite so good because they didn't quite have that liquidy feel to it. It was still kind of granulated sugar. There was just so much of it. Um, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, oh, um, Chick Fil A just is, has it pretty much right everywhere, as far as I'm concerned. I have to argue with you on that one. I'm not a big fan of Chick Fil A sweet tea. Really? Do do mm -hmm. tell. I mean, I guess I'm spoiled, though, because if you go up to where my grandparents are from, on the, I mean, they live in the corner of Alabama, and you can drive 15 minutes to Georgia or 15 minutes to Tennessee. So they are, like, in the southern sweet spot of the Bible Belt. Was so, that a, wait, wait, wait. Was was that a pun? Yes, it was completely <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that didn't get passed over. Completely, totally intentional, totally. Uh, <laughs> and that's the place. You know, you go to family get-togethers at your great aunt's house, and you get sweet tea out of the Mayfield gallon jug that your great aunt has had for probably five years. And it's the best sweet tea you've ever put in your mouth because the jug that it goes in is seasoned. Oh, Lord. So when I taste Chick-fil-A sweet tea, okay, it's sweet tea, but I'm used to, um, like I said, the southern sweet spot of sweet tea. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's that's fair. Like you, you are spoiled, and therefore your opinion doesn't matter. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I mean, Chick Fil A's lemonade is the best. The lem I mean. Their lemonade is, is is pretty tough to beat. Um, that's what I get every time. I they uh, I actually just got Chick Fil A on yesterday, in fact, and uh, yesterday, huh? On yesterday, you know, I was going to say, uh, I was going to say on previous day in the week, which would have been made more sense, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'm like, oh, wait a second, it was it was yesterday, and so I just finished my sentence yesterday. Um, it was supposed to be like a, a stop, go back, and restart, but the words are already out of my mouth, so uh, there's nothing. Just word vomiting, it just comes out. It. This is how you podcast. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so. I went there yesterday and, uh, you know, get, get get the chicken, get the fries. My thing with Chick-fil-A is I I like the Chick-fil-A sauce. I like the Chick-fil-A chicken, obviously, chicken sandwich, everything like that. Um, I like to get the Polynesian sauce to dip the fries in. 
apparently that's a unique thing because you're not getting me, me any sort of like positive reinforcement in that regard. You're probably going, oh, I can't, what a weirdo. I can't say that it's that it's a weird thing because I've not necessarily tried it. Mm -hmm. Like I've had the Polynesian sauce. I worked at Chick-fil-A, okay. but I didn't eat it with my meal because I would always, I mean, I'm pretty Wait. basic. I <laughs> what? <laughs> so you're like, I didn't eat it with my meal. Did you <laughs> drink it off hours? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> That is a logical conclusion hey, you could come to from, from that statement. Like, <laughs> I mean, hey, I I would be lying if I said I have not drank sauce before. <laughs> I mean, okay, let me back up so I can clarify this a little bit. All right, walk this back. Um, Let's see if I can recover from this. Wish me luck. So, when I would work there... I would get a plethora of sauces, whatever, on my break, just so I could try them. But I usually would go back to my basic honey roasted barbecue, because that's my favorite. Okay. So I have tried the Polynesian, but I haven't, like, I'm going to get Polynesian sauce, and I'm going to try it with my nuggets, and with my fries, and with everything, and I'm going to actually make myself... You know, taste it and see how it is compared to the other because I'm like, oh, nothing can be honey roasted barbecue because it's it's my favorite, it's the best, and it's and so <laughs> and yeah, if I have a pack of slightly used honey roasted barbecue and I'm out of nuggets, you know, and I don't want to waste the sauce, so <laughs> just <laughs> and you uh. know. I, I mean, as bad as bad as this is this, as bad as this is going to sound, there's not really any way. Any, wow, I can't speak. As bad as this is going to sound, there's not really any other way to ask this question. Broke butt, are you a plate licker? No. No. This like, is sounding like exactly what's going on here. Like, oh, I mean, my little dish of there... barbecue sauce. There's some <laughs> left in here. <laughs> Just. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Def I don't pick up a plate and lick it. Now, if there's some sauce left, you know, or uh, I have been known to get a spoon and just eat the jelly at Cracker Barrel, just, you know, just eat it. So, what you're saying is that you are a refined plate licker. You you still have too much pride to just commit fully, pick up the plate, and go for it. Unless there's chocolate involved, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> I mean, this is this is like a no shame kind of area because I am one of the world's worst plate lickers because I have zero shame involved with it, and I'm just like, yeah, I just did that. Deal with it. It it does depend. Now, if I'm out with a bunch of people, no, probably not, or in public at all. Oh no. Other than just my immediate family, probably not. I'll but you're it. like, you're a dedicated plate licker. Like like. So we had, do I have a picture of this actually? Um, uh, let me see if I can find this uh, particular. This was, so on my birthday this year, my, oh my word, why is my phone so slow? Um, there we go. Uh, I went to this rather extravagant restaurant and I ordered this rather extravagant dessert. Um, but apparently, wait, 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 there we go. Oh, yes. Trace Leche's cake. Um, so I'm going to share this little picture here on podcast thing. If I can get my phone to work. Apparently, so well. my mic that you that I blame you for me purchasing mm -hmm. but it was I got a good deal on it it was like $15 cheaper than it normally would have been mm -hmm. apparently it works pretty well because my dogs were barking and discord didn't light up yes so 
this is this is why a decent quality microphone is so 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 important now there's a bunch of other peripherals and stuff that might be on in addition to those but oh no not her fine damn it i am i mean i am i would be lying if i did not say that i was thrilled that it was a dollar cheaper to get the pink one Mm -hmm. i was kind of skeptical because i was like basic black is cool but I'm gonna just share a picture of my oh my word beautiful setup. Why, why, why phone? All right, I'm and gonna... I finally hung my panda picture too. Very nice. So oh. I'm just sitting on my desk. Man, if I'd have only known you a couple years ago, I, I'd have, I'd have had just the thing to send to you. I went to um uh to Shanghai. And they, and in Shanghai, they, come on, and there we are. Beautiful. And I, I did not send the uh, picture of the end of that because the end of that was me just ha- having already licked the plate. So, again, zero shame. Now... I mean, I don't care where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I will be the first person, which this might actually be worse than plate licking. Oh, and it was, by be... the way, by the way, it was a very nice restaurant. There was like some guy, legitimately, there was a guy proposing to his girlfriend across the way. I'm sitting there uh, on my birthday with my mother. <laughs> this Trace Lachey's kid comes out. I devour like way more of it than I should have had. And then proceeded to lick all the chocolate sauce and whipped cream off the plate that was left over. (laughs) Please tell me, please tell me you have a picture of the person proposing in the background as you lick the plate. Because that would be amazing. (laughs) No, but I do have a picture of uh, like one of these Instagram girls getting her uh, boyfriend to take pictures of her out in front of my, the law firm that I work at. Um. That's so beautiful. yeah, but yeah, no, I no no pictures of me. I try to avoid that as much as possible. For you, yeah, I forget the whole Sasquatch thing. Oh no, that's um, just I just don't like to break people's cameras. It's a very considerate thing on my part. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair point, fair point. I have seen the the. Gabby face mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna stop right there <laughs> before I dig a hole. Like we've already talked about that on this podcast. Are you sure you want to dig deeper? <laughs> no, no, I do not. <laughs> My foot does not taste very great, so I'm just gonna stop. Mm. I mean, to be fair. Ducky just walked in and she's like, text me where the paper towels are because we um, recently had a roommate move in, Monday actually. It has been, wow, it's been a crazy week. It feels like it's been longer than that. And she was asking me where the paper towels are because they used to be in the closet that is now my closet and now they're not. Right. Um, It's it feels like it's been way longer than a week since I've actually spoken to you. I I did have to laugh at that, but go ahead. You did have to what? I did have to laugh at that, but go ahead. What did we laugh at? Um, I'm sorry. About, about how long it's been since, we, since we've last spoken. Because I believe you messaged me, like, what was it, a couple days ago? Um, where you're oh, like... Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm trying not to talk to you so that we don't run out of to- topics on the podcast. And I'm like, aren't you the same person that I've had, like, multiple three-hour conversations with in the same week? <laughs> well, see, I said that because I wanted to be able to talk about my whole week on the podcast because I knew it was going to be so crazy. Okay. Which I honestly haven't had Tom to have three three-hour conversations with you this week. Fair. I mean, that's never stopped us before. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> Very fair point. Okay, let me rephrase that. I don't think I could have physically handled that. I've been fighting a cold all week. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> what, what day was it? Monday and Tuesday, I just came home and I went to bed. Like, it was um, mm -hmm. my roommate's first two nights in, which I went to school with her. We're really good friends. But it was her first two nights as an actual resident and not a guest uh-huh and i i mean i just came home and went to bed i was like well you live here now get used to it um you are no longer special <laughs> exactly so the honeymoon, and then when <laughs> say the honeymoon uh, season here ended real quick for that one <laughs> not even two days it's just gone it's over <laughs> uh and then wednesday I went to the doctor as soon as, like, I got off early and I went, drove an hour to where my parents live and went to that doctor um, who's seen me for this annual sinus infection that I get. Hmm. And I've been um, running off fumes from that shot that they gave me at the doctor's office all week, which is the only reason I was able to stay awake last night at the lock-in <laughs> yeah well there's there's two there's two things that'll keep you awake um at a, at a youth at a youth function lock-in number one copious amounts of caffeine the other is fear for self-preservation unless you have very different lock-ins than than i've always had well most of these kids, like, if they were going to do something, it wouldn't be to me because I'm the cool, fun one. Uh, I mean, I do have rules. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm usually the first to enforce the rules, but also the first to come up with some crazy whatever for us to have fun with. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, which I kind of wound up semi heading up or restructuring some of the rules halfway through the nerf war that we had and um kind of leading capture the flag or in this case glow in the dark balloon okay so i mean it was pretty fun i had a lot of fun this weekend there, there's a there's a youth through youth group there's actually two youth group games that i recommend uh, one of them is a they're actually both variations on capture the flag but they're very, very different. Um, and, and you're free to take these as you like or, or just ignore them completely. Um, both of them eventually got banned at my church. <laughs> so also take that as you will. Um, the first was called uh, Defend the Alamo, um, where it's like Capture the Flag, but rather than there being like two flags and two teams, there is one goal or one, one post. And then there are two teams. One is the attacking team and one is the defending team. And all the um, attacking team has to do is to either get into some relatively large area or um, touch some relatively large object like a car or, I mean, we, we've played it multiple different situations. Usually, usually cars or we had like a, a little pavilion that we guarded one time when we had like 40 people playing. And then you kind of off balance the teams so that the there's like three times as many attackers as there are defenders. Um, because it it's really kind of unfair when you only have one <laughs> when they can only come from one direction, as it were. Um, and so uh, the the defenders do a pretty good job. It's 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 really about a, a pretty even fifty fifty split, even when people are not particularly athletic like you know younger kids or things like that so that's i, I really like that one um and what you do is you separate in two teams the uh, uh the attacking team they leave and playing this in the dark is the best like it's really the only, actually playing this playing both of these games in the dark is really the only way to make it work properly so we were pretty much in the dark we have some fancy stage lights in our sanctuary mm -hmm. um, that they actually got for the youth because they have service in there because we've got like 70 
youth and we turned those on and the overhead fluorescent lights off it was it's a pretty good nerf war mm-hmm. scene very good continue yes yes Sorry. yes <laughs> and, i mean I, I love the idea of nerf war but it's, it's basically just tag um but so the defenders if they see one of the attackers they run over they tag them they prevent them from getting there when if they're tagged uh, they are actually taken to a jail place where they're all just kind of lined up and attackers can come in and try and release the people who are in jail. Um, like we've played this at campgrounds and stuff like that where like we had a guy who worked his way slowly through the woods crawling on his stomach for an hour and a half just to finally pop up and realized that we had all stopped playing 20 minutes ago. <laughs> oh no. See, that that would be me. <laughs> and I'm like, this this is great. And and just so we had an effort. <laughs> that that one got got banned when um we had an attacker try and just like run straight in and it, it, th- this one wasn't me, but it was one of the other bigger folks at my church and he straight up tackled him right at the waist and just yeah just pile drived him it was wonderful um but uh it as it took him about 10 minutes longer than everyone was comfortable with to stand back up we kind of got shot down from ever playing that game again also um there was the other game that we call it angels and demons you know, very, very biblically based. Spiritual. Yeah. Yep. yep. And so what happens is you uh, get like a hat, you know, and you write on a piece of paper numbering the total number of people that you have. You have your angels, you have your saints, and you have your, um, your, your demons. And you have like an equal number of saints and demons, usually like uh, one for every 10 saints, one each for every 10 saints. Um. And or, or if, it's, if you only have like ten people, then you know it's two angels, two demons, and then everyone else is saints. Saints are by far the majority, and you have everyone put their head down. And this can be done like indoors, so it's better for that kind of thing. And uh, you put everyone put their head down in the dark, and you say, you know, devils come out, and the people who have pulled the little devil sheets, you know, little because everyone have everyone draw out of the hat, so it's fair. Um, what kind of what they're what they are, and it says either saint, angel, or demon, and so they pick this up and they. Um, and they they bring it to the you know the moderator you know one of the youth workers, and the, the moderator hands them a flag, that they are then free to hide anywhere that they like, provided it is still somewhat visible. Um, that can get interesting because we have some very inventive people who have put it in some very inventive spots, and so. When they when the idea is that they go and they hide this, they come back, they sit, put their heads down, they say, "Okay, you know, three, two, one, go," and then everyone stands up, and you don't know who anybody else is unless you're a demon. Then you know who the other demons are, and so the saints, their job is to go run around and try and find the flag. The angels can do that as well, but they are the healers, and so if a saint gets touched by a devil, they have to sit down right where they are, and they can't stand back up. You know, and then on, unless they're touched by one of the angels, and then they can stand up and, and go away. And it usually so takes, huh? So like it's almost like Killer in the Cabin combined with like Freeze Tag and Capture the Flag. Yes, all three of those. That's amazing. In the dark, and the flag is not at a static location. It's anywhere the demons decide to put it. One time, so one the way that we typically played at our church was we had this little like very rickety podium, uh, not even really a podium, just like a little like stand. Not even a, it wasn't a music stand. I don't know what it was, but it was just a rickety little thing that like if you blew on it too hard, it fell over. And that was where once you found the flag, you grabbed the flag, you handed it, you brought it back there. And we put it in the middle of the, fo- in the foyer, and uh, the demons went out and. Uh, they, you know, they hid the flag, and we looked at, looked for this thing for like an hour and couldn't find it. We knew who all the demons were at this point. Like the angels were all dead. There's like three people left, and finally one of them figures out where the flag was. 
it was this little at the bottom of the podium was this little tripod thing with like these heavier wooden pieces and they stuffed it under there so it was right at the at the goal the entire time but nobody saw it <laughs> that's the best that is absolutely i mean genius yes but we also did get that game band in the same night we had a girl put her hands through a glass door as she was trying to open it and missed all the parts that weren't glass and put both of her hands through the glass and broke it and shattered it and cut herself and that was not good and we also almost killed our former pastor's son because there were three people who were all coming up to it so like our, our sanctuary has um four sections we have this big center aisle and then we have like a little aisle in the back of that and then there's a the, the center aisle comes out to the door and so our former pastor's son was coming up the center aisle we had another really big guy who's coming up that back aisle perpendicular to that center aisle and then there was me who was running very quickly away from the guy who was the demon behind me and I made a sharp left turn into the sanctuary and I plowed full force into the big guy who was also running parallel to me and that knocked him down into the for- son of the former pastor who was coming up the perpendicular center aisle and we pushed all three of us into the back pew like right on the corner of this big hard metal, uh, not metal, uh, but wooden pew, and um, yeah. the the pastor, former pastor's son is kind of a, at least at that point, he was a real bean pole of a person, and mm. um, he got hit not calculating speed or anything else, but just by mass, he got hit by a, about five hundred pounds a person, going very fast, and he yeah got knocked into the the wooden pew and the the big heavy wooden supports broke off oh. of the pew <laughs> which if they hadn't he would have definitely oh. died yeah yeah so you know uh, so there's actually I was not um, involved in this incident but at my old school slash church you know, I went to a small Christian school and everything. It was in the church that I grew up in. We would have, with our ACE program, mm-hmm. you know, e-privilege time. So for those of you who don't know what that is, if you get your work done and you do a book report, you get extra break time. So we would get to go in the sanctuary sometimes because, hey, it's extracurricular. Y'all play on the instruments, play the piano, sing, whatever. Just don't break anything. So I was not involved in this fiasco, but my sister Ducky was. Mm -hmm. And they somehow, there was something with tennis balls and somebody went through the wall behind the stage. And so there's just this big hole. (laughs) Where somebody, like, basically sat through the wall <laughs> somehow. hmm And so, yeah, needless to say, we were no longer allowed in the sanctuary for um, our e-privilege time. Right. So. hmm <laughs> We actually, you were talking about, like, running into people during um, games like that. Last night we played Among Us, the real life version, basically Killer in the Cabinet, and we called it Among Us. Gotcha. But me being the big kid that I am, I of course played, and we have the swinging doors on our sanctuary, but we have like a curved sanctuary and a big curved hallway that goes around it, and Mm -hmm. so we have three main entrances to the sanctuary, and I was coming out one of the side doors, and this little girl bless her <laughs> i was like plowing through this door and she's plowing down the hallway running full force and i like open the door and she 
<laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh at this. And she just smacks a dab, like smacks head on into the door, just turns around like shell shook and just keeps running because she doesn't want to get like taken out by the um by the killer. Mm-hmm. So uh yeah. Then the children's minister told me maybe open the door the other way next time. So Yeah. Thankfully she's tough and didn't hold it against me. <laughs> yep, that's I mean there's only so much you can do. We're we are ta- <laughs> we are tasked with care of children and some of us should not be I am one of those people somehow or another they keep doing it I I like I was on a, I'm a, I've done um, youth counseling at camps for the last couple of years and it is kind of my goal really to not get invited back so I keep doing stuff that should definitely get me to not be invited back and if we had not had to shut down the camp this year due to the pandemic. I would have still been invited back. I'm like, I am doing something very wrong here because I'm trying to get disinvited. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you've not actually killed anyone, and the kids love, you know, all the dangerous, um, immature things you do. So, <laughs> oh no, 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 no. I like so the camp that I that I work at. Um, I am one of the stick in the mud kind of um kind of counselors where it is the camp culture that all the kids run out of the dorm at night and I have I'm just completely confused by this it makes no sense to me why that would be a thing that would be just done with no real explanation and no proper supervision other than that the uh camp director likes to chase kids down in a golf cart which is a thing that happens Mm -hmm. and so what i do is i try to uh turn the interior of the dorm into a learning experience for everybody and i tell them odd stories about my past and 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 uh Usually, at some point, they want to talk about, you know, you know, the fairer, the fairer sex, because you know I am older than them, and they assume more experienced. And I learn some, I learn new things every year. <laughs> um, uh, totally not. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. Um, well, there you go. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's a whole other story. But um, last year. I had I had won. I had gotten all my kids on the last night in bed, shoes off, pajamas on, the whole nine yards, and we are having quiet story time. And it was beautiful. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, our assistant nurse burst through the door and says, I need three guys to run out right now! And when you say three guys to a room full of guys, you don't oh, get no. three guys. You get yeah. You get a room. <laughs> all the guys, and so as they all like roll out of their bunks and start throwing their shoes on and this and like, okay, dorm. We have a we now have a dorm goal, and they all stop and look at me like, whoa, he doesn't ever endorse this. What's going to happen? I says our dorm goal right now is to steal a golf cart, which is absolutely for like the one rule which is enforced is that that no none of the campers are even supposed to be on a golf cart, not even to like ride with a counselor. Like you don't get on golf carts. And I says, steal a golf cart, assuming that this would not be a thing that they could pull off. And that it would be kind of thing that, you know, they tick people off and they just send them back to bed. Well, surprise to me, they pulled it off. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) A dorm full of guys, and they happened to pull it off. I, uh, I'm surprised that you were not more confident in their abilities. I mean, it, it, like, it, it, you know, it's one, th- but like, okay, so I know all the camp counselors. I know the camp director. My sister's the camp secretary. I know all these people. And so, like, there's no way that these guys are going to let their golf cart get taken. Well, it wasn't just that they got a golf cart. The camp director himself 
got off his golf cart, left it running, and walked away from it to address a group of campers who he was totally mad at because they were out of their dorm at night despite the fact that they tell them to as soon as they get back to the dorm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when he did that, my guys are like, opportunities and opportunity knocks and who are we to say no and i had five guys jump on this golf cart and just take off well they didn't get very far because they didn't quite have the whole driving thing down yet they were still kind of young and so they're like okay how far do we have to push this how, do we how do this? young and like uh i think i think the kid who was actually at the wheel was like 15 maybe which was not good for him because he was trying to figure things out when the camp director, who is a couple inches shorter than me, but about 40 pounds heavier, notices that his golf cart is in motion and he's not on there. And so he whips around and does the 40-yard does the sprint in like, you know, three seconds and just full on tackles and plows this kid out of the seat <laughs> like across the entire golf cart and flies over the other side and um they recovered the golf cart and that was the end of everyone else's night because as soon as you break rule number one don't touch the golf carts don't be on the golf carts everyone goes back to bed and I won so you know <laughs> <laughs> Did they tell on you? Like, did they say, no. well, Gavin told us? <laughs> nope. Like, they just thought this was cool. They thought, like, e there was no amount of trouble at that point that they were going to get in that was going to supersede the victory that they had just accomplished in stealing, stealing a, golf a golf cart. cart. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And <sighs> uh, I, I did admit to it. Uh, later on to other people who are not the camp director because I mean personally I already have dirt on the camp director I have I have pictures of him uh, playing you know other rules that you're not supposed to break at, at, uh, at the camp you're not supposed to play cards or you know engage in worldly activities because it's because it's a church camp I have a picture of him playing cards for money in my dorm oh. or at least oh. or at least that's what it appears to be <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, yeah. You definitely have some dirt. <laughs> uh, it's it's fun. It, 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 uh. You just have to. F I mean, even in situations where you're not particularly thrilled with the with the total parameters that you're dealing with, you can still find a way to you know, bring out enjoyment. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I really wanted to cause some tr like if I were to be presented with the correct opportunity I would most definitely be the first person to jump on the mischievous wagon. Mhm. Mm um I mean for crying out loud Hannah and I, you know, my best friend who lives in Texas now. Yeah. She came to visit a couple of weeks ago and we decided okay we've got the whole afternoon because she had cleared her day to spend it with me because she surprised me so we went to a thrift store in the town that my um college is in that i had just graduated from so <laughs> we decided to drive past campus and it's a small community college. So it's not a big deal. It's not like it's gated or anything. So we drove past campus and drove up to the building. My program was in. I was like, you've never been here. Do you want to go check it out and see if anything's open? She said, sure. Okay. So we go up to my program's floor for the OTA program. And all of the doors are locked. To all of the rooms. Okay. But in the hallway, there are scooter boards and these little, they're called squigs, S Q U I G Z, I think. They're like little suction cups. And so we get on these scooter boards and we're just 
racing around the hall and playing with these squigs and everything when the campus is supposed to technically be closed because it's Friday at like a one o'clock in the afternoon. And, you know, during COVID, there's not supposed to be anybody on campus anyways. But <laughs> here we are. And we just had scooter board races down the hallway and um, making videos and just racing around and everything in this building that's supposed to be closed. Mm -hmm. And this was, I mean, this was just a couple of weeks ago. So it was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, again, every opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, very similar to us. I mean, you've heard stories of Hannah and I. I've seen they... video. Video. Did I sit? Wait, which one? Uh, so there was the, 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 the dancing thing. Oh, and, and then, our and then, wrestler bit we and, do. And then there was the, um, the carrying her around for some reason. And and then there was the the vaudeville sketch, which I thought was particularly good. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So <laughs> I forgot about all that. Yeah. So yes, I, uh, I'm rather familiar with the antics. Yes. Well, when we went on our double bachelorette trip for my best friend, her, and Michaela's best friend, um. Hannah and I got it was basically a motel and we got the luggage doilies doilies not doily uh trolleys yes <laughs> we got the luggage trolleys and okay first of all we decided it would be a crazy fun idea to stuff pillows in our shirts and run into one another okay just <laughs> So we did that, and then it escalated to us drawing French mustaches on our faces. And then we were on the second floor, and Ducky and her friend Winter were on the first floor. Right. So we decided to sneak around on the outside of this motel dressed as French sumo wrestlers with these big pillows stuffed in our shirts. and sneak downstairs without being seen and barge into their room because we had a key because mm -hmm. you know which they got angry but we didn't care because we thought it was hilarious right and then we got the luggage trolleys and we were just like going down the front of this motel on these luggage <laughs> trolleys just like french sumo wrestlers <laughs> i can only imagine what that poor staff was thinking <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we were just like, there's video surveillance, but the office is closed, so I think we're okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I've also done, like, security at youth events. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, at the hotel, you're like, hey, y'all gotta be quiet. Which is actually some of the best possible situations. Because you get to walk up like the FBI. It's awesome. You bang on their door real loud, and you know they're, they're they're all church kids, so there's only like so much bad stuff that they're gonna do, for the most part. For the most part, depending there's, on the age. De <laughs> depending on the age, and depending on you know on which church they're from. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we go in there, and we like we like walk up, and and uh, it's me and this other guy, and we're both you know fairly big dudes, and uh, we walk up, and I say, okay, put on your mean face. And so I bang on the door, and this shirtless, you know, 13-year-old kid opens the door. What's going on? I said, uh, you guys are being real loud. Like, we're getting complaints at the front desk, and, we're, and I'm, just, I'm just going, to, oh, okay, we're going to... And right in the middle of, like, him trying to, like, explain that they're not doing anything wrong, his youth pastor walks up with his wife, and his wife was not particularly thrilled with his current state of undress, and so she kind of freaks out and like walks in like, you know, like flusters herself away. And the youth pastor, he like comes up, and he says, don't worry, I got this. And he walks in and closes the door and then it's got to start to get really loud. And I'm like, oh, 
<laughs> Oops. <laughs> Dude, I, I was just trying to, you know, pull, you know, pull some weight around here, and wow, I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah. Oh but the part is when, when you when you're actually like on security with a person in in charge, as it were, you get to get away with murder. And nobody even questions you. Like, all the stuff that the kids get blamed for, you can do, like, a thousand times worse. And then blame the kids, and everyone believes you. It's awesome. I did... I did think about that last night. Because I was... I mean, I am the assistant children's minister. So, you know, we have teenagers who are under the children's minister and his wife and I like they're kind of our little people that we delegate tasks to and everything Uh and I honestly thought very hard about pulling some pranks on some of the teenagers and just blaming it on the boys Mm -hmm. Uh, because I could I had free reign to go wherever I wanted to in the church you know I could go in the sanctuary where the boys were sleeping or I could go where the girls were you know, because I'm a, quote, senior children's staff. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I unfortunately chose to be the bigger person and not stress out the children's pastor more than they already were. <laughs> so I got to ask, I, 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 I'm not sure, like, I know that this is regional, but I'm not sure how regional it is. So I'm not sure if you've ever encountered this or if there's like little pockets that do it and some don't. Have you ever encountered the phenomenon of snipe hunting? Have you ever been? I have. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I've taken others. I, oh, I was so close to getting handed to go one time, but she looked it up and decided it wasn't worth it. So because Google... Uh, yeah, Google's kind of ruining things now. Oh, that uh, next lock in. We're mm-hmm. going to stop hunting. We we did such. There is a legendary snipe hunt that happened at our at our church. We convinced our our young people that there were snipe in our back, you know, fifty, sixty acres, whatever it is. Ah, it's not even that. That's not that much. Now we're near that much. Take it back. <laughs> We have a back lot with some woods on it. We convinced them they were snipe back there. There are not. There are, in fact, no snipe in Michigan. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We convinced them they were there. there. <laughs> so we send them all out, and we get a couple of guys together uh, back at the uh, back at the uh, at the church, and we set things up. Um, we get a big paper bag, paper bag, and we get like a little plastic bag, and then in the plastic bag we put like ketchup and water and a couple other things to mix it, to mix them together. Um, we get one of these like motorized bouncy balls so that like it'll just agitate itself. And then we put like a couple of bags of like, just like loose chips and stuff in there. So like it has something to rustle around with and other things, which will become apparent in a second. And so we, uh, we get this back and, uh, kids are out there for like, you know, 45 minutes and they're just like running through the woods, you know cutting themselves up doing whatever they're doing and we go we got one guys and they all come pouring back in <clears throat> and we have we hold up the bag and like the balls in there just going crazy like oh wow look it's trying to get out look at it's trying to get out and we're like what do we like what do we do now I'm like well, well now we got to kill it oh how do we do that and one of the guys comes up he says i got gotcha, you and he has this you know aluminum baseball bat I said, you're going to hit it with that? He says, yeah. And so we throw the bag down. As soon as the bag hits the ground, he just, bam, hits it as hard as he can. You hear the crunch, the chips. There's the spurting of the um, uh, of the ketchup because the bag kind of burst when he hit it. And it just, like, spurt. The, the blood spurts out. The chips crunch. One of the kids, like, just, like, goes straight over and just starts throwing up, like, violently. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, yes. This is what it is to be a youth leader. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, that is, oh, that's amazing. That's classic. Yeah, I've, I've heard some pretty good snipe hunting stories. And uh, 
I still get so irritated that we were so close to talking Hannah into going stop hunting with us. And then she decided to Google it and that it wasn't all it's cracked up to be and it wasn't worth it. Like, ah, curse you, Google. <laughs> mm-hmm. That would have been a good story. See, it's a little bit different with girls, though. Like being a counselor and stuff. Right. You have to be careful. Whereas I would. I mean, like during the lock in last night, I really wish I could have done some good pranks on the boys. Because it's just fun. And they, since I'm a girl, but I like to hang out and do Nerf Wars and, you know. Mm hmm play um dodgeball and I, I did some pretty good damage during dodgeball this morning <laughs> mm-hmm. right but since i'm a girl and i like to do all those things you know i'm a good target and fun to hang out with when it comes to um nine and 12 year old boys i had this one kid Last night, who was following me around during Among Us mm-hmm. or Killer in the Cabin, if you know, because it's basically all it was. Right. And I was just thinking, okay, this kid's been super shady. And so we come for a conference call, or whatever, to put somebody off. And this kid looks at me and he just gives me the side eye and grins and just rubs his hands together and doesn't say anything. <laughs> And then he just walks away. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I mean, he was solely doing it because I, I was, he was very sus, very mm-hmm. suspicious. Yes, very, and, very much so. Um, he was doing it to mess with me, but it became a game. It was, it was fun. I had a lot of fun last night. Mm-hmm. I'm still recovering from sleep deprivation, but. Yeah. It, 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 it'll work itself out. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> now to do it all again tomorrow for Children's Church. <laughs> well, I hope, hopefully you don't have to do it all over again tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> not... I... not... <laughs> well, the, the fun crazy... I'm the music person for River Kids. So I'll lead the music and try and get all the kids excited and everything about um, doing the dance breaks, the dance songs, and then going into a worship song. And I also have my character that I do okay. with my science experiments to learn the memory verse, which I have nothing planned for for tomorrow. So, yay. <laughs> well, vinegar and baking soda always is a big winner. Well, see, I I don't know that that would work because they all came to the trunk or treat and uh, they'd be like, you already did that one. Because um, that's all I did for three hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, what is your, uh, what is your verse? Um... I'm pretty sure it's Exodus thirty three sixteen. Um I should know it. And you know, considering I'm teaching it to these children, but my brain's not functioning. So let me see if I can find it. There it is. It's since our theme for this month has been Among Us. They, I don't know what translation it is, but it's Exodus thirty three sixteen. For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all the other people on the earth. Okay. And I did the whole salt, not salt, but the pepper on top of water, and then you dip a toothpick into um soap. liquid yeah. soap, yeah, and then it disperses it, and mm-hmm. kind of walked through like. God's presence is the soap, and we're the toothpick, and the people are the peppers. So when you put God's presence on us and 
you know, in the pepper, it sets us apart from the rest of the world. And it was really cool. And now I'm like, I can't beat that. <laughs> what am I doing? I set the bar too high. Hmm. Uh, have you ever seen Ink and Water? Ink and Water. Yeah. No. Um, let me see if I can find some here. I thought about trying to do something with, like, oil and water. Trying to spin that, you know, the, like the lava lamp mm -hmm. type deal. Well, that's actually paraffin wax, but that's, yeah. Well, you can do something similar with oil. Mm hmm Dropped a couple of pictures in the uh, World's Worst Podcast channel. Ah, that was too big. Okay. Okay, so what is this? This is ink dropped in water. Ink dropped in water. Huh. Typically it starts out like this, but as it, as it continues to bloom and to grow, um, it becomes much more uh, fantastical. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So how do you think... How would I spin that with that verse? I have the slightest idea. I have the slightest idea. Okay. <laughs> see, I'm looking for you for inspiration relating to this, Gabby. What's You're the, failing. What's the reference again? Exodus 22. Here, I'll send it in. Ugh, if I can function. I'm struggling. Struggle bus. I'm driving it and it's about to crash. So I have not talked about or asked you about your week. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Why? <laughs> my my week was uh, was very interesting, but for all the wrong reasons. Um, <laughs> just it's been an interesting. It just you know every every day just something new, and not necessarily a good way. At thirty three sixteen. Okay. I knew it was 33 something. I mean, my week overall it's been a good week, but I mean, I did have a a a emotionally emotionally ugh, ugh. I had a sad child pee on me. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> um I think I was trying to say emotionally liable child express urinary incontinence. That's what I was trying to say. I mean, those are. Uh, uh, hmm. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this kid at my clinic, he's just had a lot going on lately with life and everything. A lot of changes in family and home life. And he's not been coping with it well. And he's, I think he's pre-K age. I can't remember for sure, but he's little. And he's been expressing himself with frustration and anger and just, you know, temper tantrums. He's been a kid. But with that... And everything else that's been going on in his little life. Mm -hmm. When I asked him if he was okay, or I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because HIPAA, I don't want to you know, right, lose right, my right. job. Right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. But I just so happened to ask the right questions and his little heart melted and he started crying and... He came and I sat down on the floor and I said, do you want to come sit with me, sit in my lap? And he just shook his little head, yeah, and came and sat in my lap. And so we sat there and he just kind of leaned on to me and just cried. And I hugged him and just my my heart melted. And then I took him out to his mom and it's been kind of chilly outside. So I... 
this gust of wind came through and I was like, whoa, my leg's wet. What is that? Why is that so cold? And I look at my leg, see a little spot on my leg. Mm -hmm. Look at him, see a big spot on him. Well, (laughs) looky there. So, I have a, I have a friend, and uh, he's, he's a, he is a, a great fellow, one of the most talented musicians I've ever met in my life, just a, just a wonderful human being, can't sing to save his life, but as a wonderful human being, um, he got married a couple years ago, and uh, his, his son, um, yes, oh, his son, um, you know how kids get themselves into a situation and they just aren't really sure how to deal with it, so they just kind of stand there and it's kind of just, just like confused state of stupor? Mm-hmm. Well, his son was like in, 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 in their bedroom for some reason and um, being as he is an aspiring nudist, he took all his clothes off, right? The kid, right? The Not kid, the... yeah. The kid took all his clothes. The kid took all of the kid's clothes off. Not the dad. Yeah, he's like, he's like three or four. Well, after he did this, things happened, and he had some sort of how do I put this as cleanly? There's no way. He had a very um, liquid bowel movement oh, no. whilst naked. In the parents' bedroom, all over himself, and the floor, and my friend's shoes, a couple other things. <laughs> and so uh, he's and so he's just standing there trying to figure out how to deal with the situation in it. And finally, he goes, "Help!" <laughs> and so my friend is the first one there, and like he just can't deal with this and he's like i i i can't i don't i don't know what to do here and so he's just like he's also just standing there looking like crazy when his wife comes in and she's like oh no what happened and so she uh, starts rushing and trying to help him and she tells my friend to you know get the kid to the bathroom while, while she deals with this and he's like uh and so he starts to walk up to the kid, and the kid reaches his hands out to be picked up. Oh, uh, no. And he's like, no, I know exactly how this ends. As soon as I pick up this kid, he's going to wrap his legs around me, and then I will have all of that on me. <laughs> <laughs> so he walks out of the room, much to his wife's rejection. Where are you going? And he goes down the hall, and he opens up the, the the linen cabinet and he pulls out this rather large towel and he brings it back. He opens it up, lays it on the floor and says, sit on the towel. <laughs> <laughs> so the kid sits on the towel and he drags him through the rest of the house to the bathroom so that he didn't, <laughs> um, infecolate himself. And, uh, finally, um, after he gets the kid in the, in the tub, he walks back and he sees all the, carnage which has been unleashed in that room <laughs> and he's like still oh. holding the towel and he's like okay so he puts the towel down and he starts to very carefully uh remove all of the soiled um articles and put them in the towel and he took them out back and he burned them and i'm like you did you, you did what? <laughs> he's like i don't care <laughs> Those things to to me are now completely unclean. Like he he like chalk marked off the spot on the carpet and like does completely. not step there. <laughs> He's just like I can't deal completely with completely unclean. Going back to biblical times, we are <laughs> segregating everything, burning it off. <laughs> unclean. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh my goodness! See the most ironic thing about what happened with this little kid. Um, is I take him out to his mom and I mean I find it hilarious now but I take him out to his mom and I said you know I think he's wet and or I asked I said is he wet and she said I think so and I said well that means I am too she said yeah we're having trouble potty training (laughs) I'm like now you tell me thanks I wish that was in his you know in his chart (laughs) So I'm just curious, how old is he? 
I mean, oh, you probably can't tell me that. Never mind. No, I can't. Yeah. I mean, eh, similar to the age that you were talking about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a good, that's kids at that age, um, you know, older preschool, pre-K age, Mm -hmm. they are either almost potty trained or they're just struggling. (laughs) So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That whole story that you, that story you told me does not really surprise me with a four or five year old. I'm just like, yeah, I I don't know how I would have handled that either. Like you see, the animal kingdom has this wonderful thing worked out where if their kid is bad or in trouble or something, they can just pick them up by the scruff of their neck. We can't do that. Um, <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> That's called um, abuse. <laughs> hey, I'm saying it works really well for the animal kingdom. I think God <laughs> kind of is, I think this might be like one of those unspoken punishments from the Garden of Eden where like, yeah, that, that whole scruff thing, that is being taken out because you all can't be you know, given the responsibility. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, there's many a times my dad would grab mine and my sister's hair. If we were, you know, yeah, that's probably, I mean, well, that, that's I mean, not what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. True. <laughs> just for uh, clarification. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we would, it didn't happen often, but when her and I would get into like fights, and this was, I mean, five and six year olds. Uh, well, and one time when I was 12, um, <laughs> that my mom had to intervene on that one, and that was not fun. But that's really the only big um, fight. Ducky and I've ever gotten into is when I was like 12 and she was probably 14. We had just both had a really long day Mm -hmm. and I accidentally stepped on her foot and she pushed me or vice versa. And then somebody threw a shoe, somebody else threw a shoe. I went over to her, picked her up off the floor And it felt like it was two or three minutes, but it was probably only like 15 seconds that I was holding her suspended in the air. Right. But I remember the dialogue in my head. It was like, throw her on the floor, couch, floor, couch, floor, couch. And I was like, I'm not that mean. Throw her on the couch. So I threw her down on the couch. She slammed against the shutters, which would have resulted in a broken window if it were not for the shutters mm-hmm, right. behind the couch. And then I climb on top of her and my mom comes in there and just rips us apart by our hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, there, there are some times where it's like, yeah, we just need to stop this right now. And that's yeah. probably one of those. Um, yeah. Yeah. All, all of my family fights with my sister were, were very short lived. Um, very much so. Uh, for multiple reasons, usually, usually because some really big thing happened, and then and then one of us kind of made a noise that was not ignorable by the parents, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, so my sister slams my head in a door, or pushes me downstairs, or held me underwater a couple times. I mean, you know, it's just little, like, little, little things you do with your sibling, right? Um. But, only trying to kill you it's fine yeah it's fine totally totally not deadly at all and so um there was uh I, I think i told this story with masters that there was like one occasion where i like we, we would we would fight all the time because like from the moment i entered my sister's life i was the enemy i was the invader the one taking you know everything from her or something like that um and so we fought for years until I got just big enough. And she's like, you know, it's just not worth the fight anymore. <laughs> um, 
It's like there's we we had frequent like one time I think it was like nine or something, and she decided she was going to be, you know, the uh, the authority figure. Like we were at, we were at school. We were before school. I was doing nothing wrong. I was playing. Um, I forget what what the company is, but there is it's called the like Core Men, C U R P S, and so it's like a bunch of army rangers, things like that. And then they had more progressively more um, fan, fantastical elements added on to them, like you know, uh, like flying machines and spacemen, all kinds of weirdness. Anyway. So I had like just gotten a new one and, and that made me the cool kid of the day. And so I'm sitting there playing with my new toy with all my new friends before school. We had plenty of time. It was nothing was being done out of out of sorts. And she just like comes up and decides like that was the wrong thing to do. And so she walks over and says, you need to stop that. And I basically like, no, I'm fine. And so she grabs my toy out of my hand. Well, that the nine year old me was totally unacceptable. And so she starts stalking back away from me, and I, I, I'm going to cut to the end and say I won that fight, um, <laughs> because one of the kids ran and grabbed the adults, and they had to come and pull me off of my sister with my hands around her throat. Um, yeah. In that instance, you were the one trying to kill her. <laughs> yes, yes, I definitely was. Um. Or I wouldn't even say so much that it was like a conscious, I'm trying to kill her. I'm like, I am just done with her. And, and I just, and I just, just and I just, and I I, like this. And so, you know, I got in trouble and then she got like, she has these marks on her neck. And I'm I'm like, like uh, this shows how, how twisted child I was. Like she has to go around all day with, with with your handprints on her neck. And I'm like, yes, yes, she does. (laughs) (laughs) Like I am very proud of this. I'm not going to tell my parents that, but I. Oh no, no, this was the principal. <laughs> oh, principal, I got you. Yeah, I mean, I was fighting in his school. He had a he had a right to you know get in there on on that, but I'm like, uh, but I'm like, um, yes, I absolutely. That is, this is a natural consequence of what happened. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like it's not my fault. She and she enticed me. She poked the beast. <laughs> antagonized me and i responded it's a, probably a really good thing i couldn't do that when i was nine that would have probably been nine. <laughs> like what the voice the voice yes um <laughs> like, <would> have, uh... <laughs> like the school i went to was already kind of um they were they were just paranoid about everything so you know pokemon cards come out oh you have to ban pokemon and this that and the other and then this comes out we gotta ban that lord of the rings comes out you gotta ban lord of the rings this comes out like, like at, at one point we're all just like that was why the core guys were like such a big deal because it was like the one thing we had that hadn't been banned yet we're like please don't ban this everything we bring is <laughs> off limits um and so yeah that was, that was an interesting situation but um I also got. Uh, I also, come to think of it, I also. You, go ahead. I was gonna ask: Have you ever watched Blommy Cow? It's, um, he's a YouTuber, and he basically does all the things that makes fun of. Um. Okay, let me back up. He was a homeschooler, mm-hmm. and so he does all of the things that are homeschool related, like. We couldn't watch Pokemon and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And um, I've it's seen, very... You've seen it? I've seen a couple of them. Not all of them, but I've seen a couple of them. Okay. I think in there was one... Very... Okay. That is not what I clicked on. <laughs> I was trying to pull up a video of Blimey Cow so I could like send the link. But it brought up Molly Cyrus, We Can't Stop parody. So, is it him? <laughs> no, not no. This video, uh, uh-uh. uh. I'm posting. <laughs> I I just posted his channel in the uh in the in the Discord. That's what I was trying to do, but instead I got that, and what I just saw was not very homeschool or Christian friendly. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 an accurate description of that of that uh, music video. <clears throat> Uh, 
Ja. Anywho. Anywho. Uh, okay, on a, another topic, semi tracing back to my new microphone, Ducky is judging me hardcore. Because I have been complaining about how I need to buy a mouse for my computer at work. Right. And I won't spend money to do it. But I, in her head, I only bought a microphone for the podcast. Gotcha. Well, it's because she doesn't have more information. Which, more information, disclosing that, I can actually talk about that as long as she's not within earshot of my room. Because I told her, um, I, well, she thinks that the only thing relating to her D&D game with spoilers would be what you have. So, we can totally talk about my stuff, too, and why I actually need a microphone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I can. I, we, we we can get on this, <clears throat> get on that a little bit later. But I may have another opportunity for you to uh, to use your microphone. I do have to talk to somebody else first, real quick, to find out if they're going to be available. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, are you? What? Ah, the book. The book? No, not the book. The book? No. Nope. Then what? Um. <laughs> so. I can't say this out loud without somebody either becoming very excited or very just upset. Um, but the last couple of years, I have uh, engaged in what is referred to as the Kuya Carols. Um, and uh, you've heard of Kuya. And yes, he, I heard y'all talk about that. And he can't sing at all. And so he invited yes. me to come and be the musical talent for his Kuya Carols. Well, Kuya earlier this year basically stopped streaming entirely why <laughs> uh he's doing other things mm. and so i am going to reach out I, I need i probably should have done it earlier this week haven't done it so i'll do it sometime this coming week because i'm going to be off and i've already turned off all notifications to my phone from my work it's wonderful um so nice I don't have like to i'm on vacation that. they can't contact me if they try they will not succeed yes and so um, I need to contact him and find out if Kuya carols are also something that is off the table. If they are, I still kind of want to have a Christmas caroling night. And, uh, you know, solos are not all, the, all they're cracked up to be. Um, despite the fact that there's really no good way to sing in unison <laughs> using the internet. Despite yeah. our best efforts. I have this year gotten a couple of things together so it should go smoother with whoever it ends up being but it's still going to be a totally out of sync mess but it'll be fun that's the whole point exactly mm -hmm. so um if you're offering opportunity for you to use my microphone again i don't know what that voice was um it was still yours uh, yeah with this, then I would very much so be interested and love to. Okay, Because I, will... I heard about it on the podcast from last week, which, yes, I did listen to, mm -hmm. managed to somehow find time. And I was actually going to ask you about that, or at least nonchalantly present it and kind of suggest that you know, maybe you ask me about it. <laughs> well, last year we did have a third person sit in, so, um, if, if, I mean, it was technically, technically last year was open to everybody, but we only had one person who was brave enough to, to do that. Um, I think it was Foxy actually, which is funny. Um, but, uh, yeah. So that will be totally a thing that, that could be coming up even, even if, uh, even if Kuya doesn't decide to do it again this year. So. Because I still want to do it. I might still call it Kuya Kiro's just to mess with him. Not that he'll see it. But for fun. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. It is. It is. Um, 
I feel like I cut you off and I forget what I cut you off from. Uh, oh, microphone and talking about things about uh, the reason for you having a microphone. Ah, uh, yeah. I do remember. Ta -da. Ta -da. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so do we want to branch into our D and D for the evening? Absolutely, it's a requirement. We have to talk about D and D. Yes. Oh, and the other requirement. You should be proud because I managed to find time for both Ducky and I to have simultaneous free time during our crazy week mm -hmm. to catch up on Mando. I, uh, I actually thought about not watching it just to make, just for the joke of not having watched it after badgering you all week. But I, yeah, I, okay. I just saw it. <laughs> so you did watch it though, right? I did watch it. Yes. Like I, yeah. I, but it was like I was like I'm sitting I'm sitting down I'm like man, it would be so funny if I badgered I actually, her all week long and then didn't do it. I actually told her I said watch him not even have watched this after we get all this trouble because we binged. Um, oh, come on. So it barely even counts watched... as binging. It's like it's like two and a half hours, <laughs> uh, like three and a half hours. Okay, we watched the first episode. Because we hadn't watched any mm -hmm. um, before this week, I think. I think Sunday night we watched the first one. Mm -hmm. And then we watched the other three yesterday. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With, between. So I got up yesterday morning. And I had my first day as a CODA, Certified Occupational Therapy Assistant, at a school system. Mm -hmm. by myself and you know me being basically homeschooled and trying to navigate an elementary school by myself and learn all of the billing codes and everything for documentation and not get lost and stay within so we had I had four kids I was supposed to see and we have 30 minutes with each child and that counts the time we go to get the child from the classroom, get them back to the treatment area, treat them, and then get them back. Mm -hmm. So me trying to do that, along with figuring out where in creation any of these classrooms are or where the teachers are when they're at the playground and there's like eight playgrounds. <laughs> It, it it was an adventure and I chose poorly because I listened to I mean I figured I was gonna get lost anyway, so I might as well listen to the preschooler when I was taking him back to his class to find er, the playground. So I listened to this preschooler on how to get to the playground and we wound up going through the cafeteria and out like the back of the school building and walking across this parking lot to get to the playground when I could have just gone straight and gone out the gate that mm -hmm. I didn't know I could go out because there was a keypad on it. And then I got locked out because there was a keypad on it after I dropped the kid off with his class. So I had to like go knock on the cafeteria door and let the lunch lady let me back in. <laughs> so that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was an adventure. Sounds like it. I'm... I mean, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, this week will go a little smoother. <laughs> it's really weird. Like, there was nothing at work, nothing went wrong, but like, just so many other things were just off. I just... Yeah. Just a weird week. I'm looking forward to the next week and not having my phone go off 140,000 times during the course of. Every day. Um, it'll be great. <sighs> I can almost feel the relaxation right now. Anyway, D and D. D and D. Yes. Went on a rabbit trail. Mm -hmm. So D and D. I am very excited because I have been asked to play Elythra for Friendly's campaign, as you know. Yes. And I have taken it upon myself 
to come up to par with the musical um, extravaganza presentations, whatever you want to call them, that you have done for your characters for his campaign. And so for listeners' um, convenience so that they know who Elythra is, she's basically a um, herald of the darkness. She came out of, I might be saying this a little wrong, but um, correct me if you know, Gabby. I know a little bit, but probably not enough. Go ahead. She basically came out of the portal, um, out of this portal with all these demonic creatures and everything. And she has um, managed to get a blood sacrifice to present to the Queen of the Hags so that she can get into the Sacred Fae Forest. And so she gets into the Fae Forest and she's. She goes in there as this half fae, half human creature and presents herself as I'm able to get in because I am half fae. So I don't have to have a blessing to get in and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And so she goes in and she is basically a cult leader and is trying to win all of the fae and turn them into shadow fae and win them over to the dark side, basically. Right. So, and they have to do it by free will. So she's manipulating them into this. So my part comes in, and my song is basically going to be start out kind of mellow and like trying to entice, um, kind of a story enticing Ducky's party, and you know just to the general public, whoever, to the, to the Fae, enticing them to um, become Shadow Fae. And then it's going to go into, well, now you're making me angry. And if you don't join me, I will kill you all anyways. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm really excited about what my brain's doing. Okay. With this, because the song that I'm using, I think is very clever. Mm -hmm. Um, Pure Imagination from Willy Wonka. Okay. So I've tweaked a few words, kind of left the basic premise of the song for the first part. And then I'm going to transition into, hopefully I can pull it off with that software you sent me. Mm Mm-hmm transition into a dubstep version okay and it ends up going from a soothing mellow wispy still creepy song of enticement to dubstep and rapping and anger and just fury and just yeah i'm excited yeah you're you're going a lot more in depth on that than i would have because i you're telling explaining it to me like man i would have just picked either Poor unfortunate souls, or mother knows best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> blame I mean, I... <laughs> blame it on my thespianism. But <laughs> uh, poor I unfortunate mean... souls, go ahead, make your choice. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> When he so when Friendly presented this to me, I was like, okay, yeah. And then I was thinking about it and I was like, I've got to come like I don't just have to live up to Gabby's um expectations that he has set for this campaign. I have to beat them. So <laughs> I-, I love how we're turning his very serious story into just a musical. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fantastic and it's I mean, may, hey, we should just get him some viewers and then he just send them over to us. Be like, well, they're the actual masterminds behind this. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. Right now, I am 
75% to blame for his entire uh for the for all of chapter 2 and a good part of like chapter 5 whatever whenever it gets there. Um after after you leave, I'm I'm back on deck. Um <laughs> We're just going to um, tag team it. <laughs> it could be a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited. Oh, it's it's great fun. Uh, there's there's So this is the kind of thing where I am right now, because I'm just basically playing... My character died again on Tuesday. Rip <laughs> whatever his name was. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> Rip Wortley. Keep talking, I'm listening, but I'm also going to send something. Okay. So, Rip Wortley the, tur- the Turtle. Uh, I, am, I, have, I discovered this last week that I can kind of mostly do the voice of Dr. Teeth, so I'm making a cleric. Hopefully he'll keep somebody alive. Um, and that'll be great, I think, or terrible. Probably that one. Um that's my Tuesday campaign, my Sunday campaign. Uh, I just role played in the in character chat for about two hours yesterday. Um, the was it two, yesterday or was it Thursday? It might have been Thursday. Um, in honor. Oh. Rip. <laughs> in honor of Wortley. Rip Wortley. Um, <laughs> but I'm maintaining my KD ratio of 0. 0.5. <laughs> Every t- every two episodes, we lose another character. Um, but, uh, uh, so, I, I, my, my Sunday campaign, my, my character Rezo, he's a, also a cleric, and he's, like, this very, very dedicated, um, cleric, like, ex- obsessively so about his goddess, and, um, the way things played out, we... You saw the the video of me rolling the the natural one on you know divine intervention, right? Or did that? Uh, I don't. Uh, okay, so that was in the that was in the general chat of the D and D group. Um, I'll have to repost that down here since I have mentioned it now. Um, Post under the the bagpipe song. I will do that as soon as I find it in here somewhere. It's in here somewhere. Um. But it uh, so clerics at level ten get a ability called divine intervention, where you can pray to your to your god, and they and there's like a there's a progressively increasing chance that they will actually answer you and divinely intervene in whatever situation you're you're facing. Well, I prayed to my my goddess in in, in um. Uh, uh, there we go. In on the Sunday campaign, and the way that this works is that you have to roll lower than your level in order for it to to work. And so I rolled a natural one on my divine intervention roll. That just doesn't happen ever. It, it just doesn't happen. And so my goddess intervened and she saved our party and we killed this magical black dragon. Except it was all a dream. And then we woke up and my character goes in expecting to, you know, encounter the black dragon and pray to its goddess and she intervenes and she didn't. And so now he is in a great moment of crisis because he thinks, I mean, she's basically a god of chaos anyway. And now she's showing, in his mind, she's showing forth her chaotic nature. I took something that was supposed to be a joke and I actually made it part of the story. It's going to be great as far as I'm concerned. Um, Pure genius. <laughs> and so, um, and so, uh, yeah, um, he is now in this great moment of personal crisis and he is being belligerent and insulting the rest of his party members. They're going to kill him. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm having fun. Um which is a terrible thing to happen because when I have fun, usually somebody else isn't. Um, usually somebody dies. Well, not saying that that never happens, but <laughs> it gets, on kicked, them. gets kicked out of camp for stealing a golf. Yeah. 
Well, no, he got kicked out of camp, they, and, and I was not having fun at that moment. I like my version of fun. There was maintaining proper order in my dorm, and that didn't happen, and that made me upset. And then I reacted childishly, and it was still amazing. So, <laughs> okay, wait. So, <laughs> what I just gathered from that is that in order to wrangle your guy's dorm, you told them to go steal a golf cart. Yes. Because that would, because that makes logical sense when working with teenage boys. So, I told them to go steal a golf cart because I knew if they got, if they kept going for the golf cart, they would all, everyone would be forced to come back in. We're trying to take the work off of you. Oh, yes. By. Um, I mean, no, no, no. My my thing is, I am in charge of the dorm. What happens Mm -hmm. outside the dorm is not my responsibility. If one of the other, you know, counselors or camp members, whatever, comes in and says everyone should leave the dorm, what happens outside the dorm is not my responsibility. It can be my fault if I tell them to do something they shouldn't. But it's not your responsibility. <laughs> not my responsibility. Also, the whole point of coming to camp, or at least church camp, is to teach kids to make teach kids to make good choices. So if the camp counselor says to do something you shouldn't do, well, should you do what the camp counselor says, or should you do what you know you're supposed to do? This is a great learning opportunity for them, and unfortunately, they all failed. That's. Um... Yep. Good logic. <laughs> yes. Solid logic right there. I thought this through a time or two. Um, okay, back to D&D. Back to D&D. Getting some rabbit trails. Yeah, so so uh, my, my, my Sunday character is all messed up. My Tuesday character is dead. Um, but I'm really enjoying playing all these NPCs. In fact, I now have a new one, which is going to be a recurring role on another recurring role on Friendly's campaign. <laughs> <laughs> He asked me if I wanted to do, uh, I can't remember who the other one was, but the second one that comes up after, um, Elithra? Elithra, yeah. I was kind of surprised but, he didn't try and have you do Mazia, the, the, the attorney, but he had Fang do that. I don't know if you've met Fang, or not Fang, Bramble. Holy, Fang is Bramble's name in the Sunday campaign, and I only ever know him as Fang. <laughs> but anyway, um... Bramble, uh, Bramble came in and played a, a lawyer, which was pretty fantastic. Like a very angry lawyer, <laughs> and and was I trying mean, trying to to shut me down. But I remember hearing about that one. Mm-hmm. I don't think I listened to it, but Ducky was telling me about it. Um, <laughs> friendly keeps sending me this idea of a character like from a TV show of what he wants Elithra to do. Mm -hmm. But then he keeps saying, but then again, do what you want. Like it's your character. It's all up to you. Except, you know, I have, I have, um, I have a bit of acting advice for you. Okay. It's not up to you. (laughs) I realize this. He's the director. He is going like, (sighs) At some point, you're going to do something that he's going to disagree with, and he will let you know. And that happened a couple times on uh, on Thursday when I was playing uh, Quell, the, the the council member, where I was just I mean I I'm I was building a legal case, and I was like I ha- I had a plan in mind, and he kept you know no you can't do that no you can't do that because he still he told me. Um, his direction to me was that okay, first he told me to take it easy on them, like okay, and then he tells me that he's going to have Bramble there to be their defense attorney, and that I don't have to take it easy on them. So I'm like, okay, that means my goal is to actually convict somebody of a crime. I'm pretty good at that. Um, <laughs> Even if they didn't do it, <laughs> especially if they didn't do it. Have you ever heard the phrase? I didn't say it was your fault. I said I'm going to blame you for it. 
<laughs> I'm not, but I have now. <laughs> it's like the sibling's mantra. I'm surprised. Um, also, uh, Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17, but I can only, only I can use that one. You can't use that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pro, but in case you we were wondering, Proverbs 17:17 17, 17 is a friend loveth at all times, and a uh, brother is born for adversity. I was about to say, I know Proverbs 17, 17, but what? <laughs> yes. Of course, the proper inflection on it and the inflection that I use lend very different meanings to that verse. But, be that as it may, um, I have brought... Um, I, I'm, I could be wrong, but I think Scripture says something about not doing that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not really in a different interpretation, it's just different inflection. And I have fulfilled it to the utmost of my ability to provide <laughs> adversity to my sister's life. Um, <clears throat> anyway. It's fine, fine. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, don't worry about it, yes. Um, do, 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 anyway. Uh, where were we? Oh yes, D and D. So <laughs> I I was uh, I actually was trying to convince to convict people, and and Ducky being the person that Ducky is, kind of the, the bleeding heart, trying to just be very compassionate and cover everyone, and and she has diplomatic immunity in this campaign, so there wasn't all that much I could do until she started to interject in the into the uh, into the conversation, and within three minutes. I had her lying to the magistrate, and then within two minutes after that, I got proof that she was lying to the magistrate. <laughs> and I was about to kick her out of the courtroom <laughs> because she was interfering in the legal affairs of a sovereign nation, and she had no authority to do that, and that might have resulted in a diplomatic in incident. Ah... <sighs> And then Friendly jumped in and he stopped me. Darn it. Darn it, Friendly! Oh. You listen to this podcast eventually. So after actually talking to him, uh, <laughs> I could just imagine him getting Russian angry. Um, that was not, I don't know what that was. I don't think it was Russian, but um, that I'm a, trying. That was American Russian. <laughs> American Russian? Okay. Well, I, I broke butted it. <laughs> Um, I'm just imagining him Russian cursing you, uh, because I was talking to Ducky about it, because after Friendly and I had discussed our main stuff for the campaign, Ducky came in and she was just in the background and he kept saying, he kept asking me to put her on because she kept interrupting what she couldn't hear. Uh -huh. And he was like, put her on, put her on. And, um, he, Russian, he, you know, I'm, uh, homeschooler. I don't curse. I'm like PG, almost PG 13 sometimes. <laughs> and so I finally, um, just told him, Hey, friendly just keep it pg-13 he was like all right sorry i'll try and do better so i sent him this which i think is amazing <laughs> so i've actually used this picture like that very picture before <laughs> my in, in amongst the millions of text messages and emails and everything else that i get from my work <clears throat> there's a group chat for my particular department and um, a bu bunch of unsafe folks in there, and we pray for them. They're wonderful folks uh, most of the time. But uh, my boss was in a... She's a little high strung, and she was um, expressing some of that and some frustration at a very legitimate circumstance, and her phone auto-corrected to ducking mad. <laughs> And I could not resist. And I am shocked I didn't get fired. Because <laughs> fortunately... You're memeing too hard. Your meme game's so on point you lose your job. I mean, if that happened, I was just going to straight up hit the, uh, the comedy club circuit and start being a stand-up comedian because that is the greatest joke of all time. <laughs> yeah, for real. Fired for memes. <laughs> That would just be your handle, just fight, um, 
Gabby sauce fired for memes. Oh, yeah. It's just, it was too good, and I couldn't pass it up. Everyone else thought it was hilarious. I don't know what she thought because she didn't respond for a while. Um, <laughs> kind of took, <laughs> kind of took the wind out of the sails. Of the... <laughs> oh man, so much fun. Yeah. Hilarious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, so you're also part of Mumble's campaign. Yeah, and I mean, I would say unfortunately I missed last night, but I am glad I went to the lock-in and everything, but I do wish I had been able to play and figure out what happened with your character who was on the chopping block. Uh <laughs> okay, so I'm going to interrupt you, number one. Um, actually, let me pull this up so I can throw this in here, because <clears throat> I'm quite sure... That it is available on monkeys. Oh, Lord, I have to watch that later. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you open up YouTube and you're like, well, I didn't know that I wanted to watch that video, but I do now. And now I do. <laughs> this is a problem. All right. Uh, so let's go to monkey DKS. All right. I'm quite sure he has his VOD up from last night. I hope he has his bot up from last night. Far Reaches, that's session one. We have session two. Horde of the Dragon Queen, session eight. He doesn't have it up yet. Darn it! Anyway, he'll have it up there, so you can actually all watch that if you have time, or just skip around into the interesting parts. Um, I can get, I can spoil what happened with my character if you'd like. Go ahead. Ducky kind of said a few things, but so first of all, I was not on the chopping block. I was okay. the man operating the chopping block. Ah, Aha! okay. Yes. And I am basically doing um, a Count Rugen voice. Um, well, it started out as Count Rugen, and now it's much more, um, at least from my perspective, it's much more uh, Grand Moff Tarkin uh, from Star Wars. But, um, yeah. I'm I'm kind of disappointed because like I'm I'm preparing for this big epic fight because I have like a lot of guys on my side and then as they start you know attacking this guy attacking this guy Mumble's like and then the next person runs away and I'm like wait a second <laughs> I'm he kind I'm, of screwed you over a little bit huh a lot bit like nine of my guys we I had like twenty guys on the board I had some pieces to work with <laughs> and. He's like, and then this person runs away, and then this person runs away, and then this person runs away, and I'm like, I'm running out of guys here, fella. You gotta give me, you gotta make this legitimate fight. And then at the end, he's like, oh yeah, and then you run away, and I'm like, oh, oh. Well, according to my character, I don't think that he would actually do that. I think that he would stay around and he'd fight to the end, and he would really make a very, pro, you know, very chivalrous showing of himself. But <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, before I could make that comment, my entire PC collapsed on me, and it happened in my absence. So, um, but I was about to kill someone, and I don't, I don't know enough of the people who are in that campaign to know who I was about to kill. But I was about to kill somebody, <laughs> and then my character ran away. <sighs> kill Wallace Shawn yet? <laughs> oh, I need to get to. <laughs> let's say Wallace Shawn like cleaved four people in half like that was just did he use oh did he use his father's sword he used he used his father's sword his father his father's sword guided his hand straight through the bowels of this man and then through the leg of that one <clears throat> it was it was see, it was epic <clears throat> see when when you use his voice it makes me feel like <laughs> i should not have wallace Shawn. i i am not worthy of wallace Shawn. hey Look, but, uh, hey hey, hey. <laughs> There's always opportunity. Not, I mean, I have I have bad news for you, Brooke, but I have terrible, terrible bad news for you. There's a certain level of quality to my voice, which you are, um, um, what am I going to say here? Not, not, not necessarily saying like, like tier quality, but like independent quality, um, like that, that you are biologically incapable of replicating. So in other words, I'm a female, so I can't speak as deep as you. <laughs> that might be what I'm saying exactly. 
Um, yeah. Dang. Use big words. I don't know. Yes, that, I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, I mean, not to, not to be offensive about it or anything, but, you know, apparently nowadays you can't make, you can't even tell people there's a difference between guys and girls, so you just kind of, you know, wing it or something. I gotta remember that voice, because now I know, I know exactly who that voice is, and I gotta remember that, because I gotta use that sometime. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just time stamp it and send it to yourself. Oh. Uh. I'm so offended that you like had the audacity to say I have the voice of a female. Well, that's the <sighs> second time this week I've had the audacity to say something. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, that was clever. That was very smooth. Beautiful. For those of you who are listening, audacity is the um, software for vocalizations that everybody on the internet uses yeah well it's new to me <laughs> oh it was it was new to me you know holy crap it was new to, new to me uh nine years ago something like that nine eight years ago eight or nine wow That's, you're old yeah um what well, audacity is old <laughs> <laughs> um uh. But uh, but yeah, I, I I remember watching all those years ago the video which explained to me precisely how I could use the the ins and outs of audacity, but not really that at all. It was like three three little itty bitty tiny uh, settings on there. You just change this one, change this one, change this one. Run the compressor, run the noise reduction, and cut out the parts you don't like press export and i'm like okay i'm good um i mean you can do crazy things with audacity if you're willing to put it forth the time the effort to learn it and then to do it i'm lazy all i was doing at that point was cutting out swear words from my other podcast members and sticking in uh pig oinks <laughs> true story i can't believe you had the audacity to do that oh uh, well i I was very, very much uh, of the opinion that um, we did not need to be an R-rated podcast, and they were less of that opinion. Um, but I did my best, and uh, I'm still very proud of that. Actually, let me see. Do I still have it? Uh, would it be here? No? See, I knew you had told me that you had edited out swear words. But you didn't tell me that it was pig noises. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I did a, a, a Monster Hunter-based podcast. And in Monster Hunter, there are these little creatures called poogies, which are basically just pigs. And so every time that someone swore, I had the pig bleep out the swear. Because <laughs> I thought that was a great idea. Um, it, was, it was cute. We had, there was another uh, podcast that they there was Monster Hunter based, and they had um, cats who would um, uh, bleep it out, you know, yeah, kind of thing. And then uh, I just had this very obnoxious oink kind of thing that uh, would would cover over the swear. And um, yeah, I thought that was a brilliant idea. I mm -hmm. mean, yes, bravo. I can't find it. Has okay. my pig voice gone away? Anyway. I just want to clarify. Oh, there it um, is. Does it sound like I'm distant? Because I'm kind of sitting back from my microphone. Or um, is it good? Okay, so I may have just played the pig noise. Oh, <laughs> you have no idea what I said. <laughs> he was really loud. I bleeped, out, duck I ble I bleeped out broke butt. I'm sorry. <laughs> But no, no, you're 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 actually coming through very clearly. I do, yeah, I can hear you very well. You can sit however okay, you yeah. like for the most part, just trying to be like you know eight feet away from your microphone. Um, I'm just gonna climb under my desk and just lay upside down with my feet in the chair instead. So yeah. I mean, if you get the right bracket, you can make that work. True, very true. I keep trying to think of ways. 
because okay so when i was um podcasting the last time you know before this the la- the last podcast i ran <laughs> so many of those ha 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 we are actually more than half. Back in my day. <laughs> we're actually almost to the halfway point of that one. Like we are, we have almost half as many episodes now in this podcast as I did on that one, which is terrifying. Um, most viewers you have ever had. What's the most viewers I've ever had? Yeah. Ooh, that's a great question. Let me see. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm asking all the questions. Do go here and so we were averaging about 200 to 250 views an episode. Wow. Um, we had a couple that were bigger. We had a lot that were smaller, but the but like the average out was probably probably about 250. Um, all said and done. Is yeah, that okay, the one? maybe a little less, maybe maybe around two hundred, because some because I'm looking I'm looking back here at some of the uh, other ones, and they're like, yeah, one fifty. Well, here this one, this one. So, yeah, prob- probably about two hundred. So, which podcast was that? I don't say. You don't. Can... <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a lot of things I've left in my past, and this probably <laughs> needs to be one of them. Oh, okay. so so seriously. Um, now, I'll, you know what? I'll actually, I'll actually, I'll actually post a link to the channel. Um, in in the, in the Discord. This is before I had any form of legitimate microphone, so I will put that out there. And you'll notice very very quickly, um, my voice when I was recording these was about, well, at least the beginning when it got, as we got farther in, it got a little deeper. Um, but at the first couple episodes, I'm about a half octave higher in register than, than I am now, if not even a little bit more than that. (laughs) Because yeah, um, this is not, how I how I should probably sound. I worked my way down, um, and and the uh, the triple cart podcast, as it is probably as it is properly called, is uh, is how I got there. Um, so I'm very thankful to them for that because otherwise I'd be up here all the time. Like this, this is what I sounded like way back when. Very, I'm playing it right now. That's a, that's and, a... <laughs> I mean, your imitation of the octave of your voice at that point is very spot on. I know. I, I, like, this is, this should be my normal register of voice, but I have trained myself that this is now my new, like, this is, this is natural for me now. Mm-hmm. See, when I, I mean, I feel like my voice lowers an octave when I'm tired and when I'm not tired I'm like (laughs) first alto range and then when I am tired I'm like second alto going into tenor (laughs) I mean technically tenor can be the highest part in, in in a piece of music so you know yeah, technicalities, whatever. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't a, I'm not saying I can hit I that was, part, but I'm saying... It's can't be I was not a music theory major. I was a, I'm going to join choir because it's free and gives me something to do and an opportunity to go to New York. <laughs> you see, that's one of the things. I think this is why, particularly that I, like, I worked to get my voice down, and one of the reasons why I have worked to become a uh, like one-third competent student singer. Um, it's because I actually enjoy, as weird as this is, a weird, very weird way of putting it, but I actually enjoy the sensation of speech. And I so, don't... Go ahead. Sensation of speech. What do you mean, 
like the science behind it or I like the way that words make me feel when they come out of my mouth. I like the way that it makes me feel when I sing. I like the way that like the the subtle vibrations, the tonality, all those things. I I like that. It is it is pleasant to me. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, have you ever looked into the science of inflection and how um, the vocal cords and everything and like the way your um, oral muscular uh, stuff works? Have you ever looked into that? Not at all. I think you would find it pretty interesting. I mean, I'm thinking of it as a... Well, semi-musically, semi-musical standpoint and also a medical standpoint, because I work with speech-language pathologists, but there's a lot that goes into just the simple vibrations and noises that we make and pronunciations, inflections, all of that, and the science of communication. So... I think it would be, I think you should look into both that and then um, how it relates to music too, because of how, like, where in your diaphragm or in your gut, you know, versus chest voice or head voice. And um, I think that you would find that really interesting. So, one of the things that I've always been very interested in is there's a couple of different words for it, but the actual, like, scientific base for it is called polyphonic singing mm -hmm. and um i'm going to post a video to this as well it will mess with your mind um this this lady is look kind of looks like some sort of like you know, she's in some sort of trance but when you actually listen to what she's doing you're like i don't understand how the human voice can do that but somehow or another if i am some able, somehow able to figure out how she does what she does i want to do that um, which might be some, <laughs> it makes no sense to me how she does that. Um, <clears throat> she sings two tones at once and can independently control them. Yeah, it's because it's like two different, um, I mean, I've not watched it or anything, but if one is like a higher pitched octave and one's a lower octave, it's because of she's a she has figured out how to isolate where in her body that noise is being produced because essentially, okay, noises come from your vocal cords, but also they range from, like I said, your gut versus your head or your chest or your nasal passages. Cause, um, you can actually, I could be off on this, but I want to say you could act, you can actually make like speech, like vibration noises out of your, I want to say your nasal passages. And then also you have your voice box. Mm -hmm. So being able to segregate those and work those specific muscles, if you can figure out how to do that, then you would be able to um, produce polyphonic noises. Yeah, the closest I've ever gotten to that is is when I play the mouth trombone, <laughs> which is which is still one of my personal favorite, and, and 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 it does also kind of scratch that itch that I have for for vocalization from the originator from like the originator standpoint because it hits all the right it, it hits all the right spots I guess. Um, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Fun. I've always wanted to learn. To play a wind instrument or something. They fascinate me. If I ever play a wind instrument, it'll be the saxophone. There is no other inst wind instrument as far as I'm concerned. At least none that's worth playing. <laughs> and, I, and I say that and I love trumpet and I love this. And I love, but like, if I'm going to play one, I'm going to play a saxophone. Because it just seems like the most fun. I've never seen a sad person playing a saxophone. I've heard sad saxophone music, but the person playing it is never sad. Like... <laughs> It just seems like the most fun thing you could possibly do. I've, okay, so the saxophone and also the violin. I've always, like, 
if I could just <laughs> learn how to play two things, I w it would be that. And also this upright bass. I don't know why, but that's just, <laughs> I could just see myself playing a bass. I'm, I'm going to be honest. As soon as, if you figure out how to play a violin, you can play pretty much all of the four main stringed instruments. It's the same, it's the same basic skill set. There's just some slight variation on how you do things. Um, and that, I say that because I learned how to play the violin. And I'm pretty, I, I discovered very, within about a year that I was going to be very bad at it because, um, yeah, my hands got too big to hold, to hit the notes properly. And, uh, that's when you move to the cello. <laughs> Well, that's when you move to the cello or the viola or the, or the upright bass. I would have I would have probably done really well with the cello, but um, I was basically just doing it because it was a school requirement, and they wanted you to learn how to play an instrument. And so I picked the violin because I thought it was really cool. And then I got too big to play the different notes, and um, and no one is actually going to play the viola. <laughs> Who would ever play the viola, nerd? And then um, yeah. That was too far. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, you know, I could play the cello. And then I'm like, well, I could play the cello or I could sound like the cello. And I just decided to try and sound like the cello instead. Um, sound like the cello? Oh, yes. Yeah, so the, the cello is noted as being the one instrument which is closest in approximation to the human voice. Huh. Particularly within the baritone register, which guess where I live now. Baritone. No, soprano. First soprano, that's what it is. That's where you are. Well. <laughs> um actually there's this great video online. Well, it's actually pretty bad. Um <laughs> <laughs> just posting all <laughs> kinds of YouTube videos way. here. Alright, let's find this uh man with a crazy voice, all right? This has gotta be it. Yeah. There is no other singing video I've ever seen quite like this. The man terrifies me. Um, yeah. The man with his crazy voice. Uh-huh. I think he's Russian. Um, he's got an accordion, though. Oh, yeah, the accordion. Wait till he hits the note. You'll know. Um, assuming that you're watching that right now. Yes, I am. Uh huh. But, <laughs> um, yeah, the, what is it called? The song that I sent you. Yes. What song is that? Do you know what I'm talking about? That I sung and oh. beatboxed to? Oh, the, the Diva song from Fifth Element. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, I have an admission to make, which I think I've already made to you, but just for clarification, that song was never written to be sung by a human voice. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think we talked about it. Mm -hmm. You told me about it. Not, yeah. And if you listen to mine, my recording of it, what is that note? I know. <laughs> It just stops you dead in your tracks, doesn't it? Like, what is that? <laughs> I I have no words. The audience, their reactions. I'm <laughs> what? Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. And then he does it like nine more times. I mean it it reminds me of the um Dance Diva mm -hmm. from Fifth Element, though like the I will say this, there is someone who has sung that song in its entirety properly. And I have the video. Oh yeah. She actually trained for, like, to be able to do that, she actually trained 
by planking and singing to increase her core muscles and um, build up her vocal cords. Mm hmm. Yeah, you got to do something because. Mm hmm. That's intense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can we talk about the difference in what you masters talk about versus us? <laughs> I mean, when... is is there a difference? I can't tell. I mean, I I don't think I've ever heard y'all talk about um, the science of vocal cords and uh, singing. Like, I don't know. I could be wrong. It just hasn't come up yet. Well, now it's been presented in the podcast. You're welcome. Yeah, there we are. Anyone who's uh, curious about that, information has been disseminated. Accuracy, we are not liable for anything which may... Do not hold us against... Do not hold this against us, because... Yeah. Makers of Speaking. the World's Worst Podcast cannot be held responsible for anything the hosts do or do not say, and the hosts themselves claim full deniability. Basically, if you have a problem with it, you're screwed. Deal with it. Um. <laughs> Beautiful disclaimer. Yes. Uh, speaking of masters, I, I don't oh. care if he says something about it or not. So on Facebook, his dad posted a picture of him in, I guess it's Town Square or whatever at Disney World. Mm -hmm. And I just imagine Master's character looking like from the from mumbles friday night campaign mm -hmm. oh my gosh that's the t-shirt i got <laughs> i just realized that okay just like the way the mask is and everything in this i imagine his character having that and just like a cowboy hat okay just uh -huh. the full just there is no face. It's just a black mask. And he looks like a bank robber <laughs> with the sunglasses and everything. Like, so this is, this is hilarious. Cause like, I have a big thing. Like, I don't, I was actually going to say like, Oh, you should probably take that down. I don't want to have, you know, people's pictures on my, on my discord. Other people do that. I don't, but nowadays <laughs> nobody knows who it is anyway. <laughs> right. That's what does it matter? I, that's the only reason I put it on here. I was like, they're all in masks. I can get away with this. Masters can't say anything about it. <laughs> like, Masters is one of those three people, and it's probably the one on the left. Can... Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yes, with the long hair. Uh-huh. <laughs> can we talk about, though, how his black mask just bl <laughs> blends in with his beard, and it just looks like a really big mask? I know. Plus, he's wearing sunglasses, <laughs> and it just looks like he's covered from his eyes to his, you know, to his neck. <laughs> He's just eyebrows and forehead. There's a lot of that, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said it, not me. I've said it to him. I don't care. <laughs> True. Okay, I'm just saying. Disclaimer: He can't kick me off of this podcast for saying that because I did and you did. Yep. Although I did present the photo, you did. But I mean, it's not like I don't have a bunch of other photos. But you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, I saved this picture specifically so I would have an excuse to post it in the, I mean. <laughs> so you were planning this out. Oh, yeah. Okay. 100%. I could and not just because, no, if it was just a picture of them standing in front of the building, whatever. Okay. But the masks and the way the mask just blends into his, his beard and everything. I was like, this is too good not to talk about. In the mm -hmm. podcast. Oh, yes. It, it, I mean, it's it's like we redacted his face, but we didn't. <laughs> you know, you know, like those it's just that way, you know, like those those pictures where they, they black out the face and they just like, OK, we, we we're showing you that we're here. but We can't show you who we were with. Like, it's mm -hmm. like we did that. But but he did it himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he was asking for us to post this when <laughs> when he took this picture, like when it was put out there. Uh, I also, I mean, I there, really, there should be something there where they're like, you know, you guys are taking a picture. You can take the mask down. I'm just, cause I mean, 
again, this also and this also impedes family memories. Oh, remember that time we went to Disney World? Nope. And you have no proof. <laughs> yeah, again, it's just the they just blurred it out. It's just not there in the memory bank either. Mm hmm. Totally gone. I think it's hilarious that he's wearing the shirt that I got him. He probably doesn't remember me getting that for him, but what does the shirt say? Um, it's some math term. I don't even remember. Um, there are ten kinds of people, and something, something or other about binary understanding binary, and oh. and then the other ones don't. I I think it says one I, of them. I, I got. I, binary. I, I got it. There are ten kinds of people: those who understand binary and those who don't. One zero in binary is two. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I remember buying him that shirt and him having to explain it to me. And I was like, I don't know what this means, but I'm sure you... <laughs> you know, it's a thing. Uh, I think I got that for him off of Amazon. And I don't really understand binary, but I know enough to know that. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good, that's good, that's good. <sighs> uh, I also, I mean, I premeditated posting that picture just because it would entice him into listening to the podcast. So you're welcome, Masters, if you actually, <laughs> if it worked. <laughs> he just skipped around, looked for it. Oh, probably. He's probably going to do the math and say, okay, so they probably started at 8 o'clock. And they posted this at 10, so I'm just going to fast forward two hours. No, no, he'll, wait a second, when, when was the first thing we posted in here today? What was that? That was at 8.50. So yeah, he can definitely do the math. Never mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, um, anything more D&D? &D? I don't uh, not think that we've been so. talking I about mean, D D for the last twenty minutes, but anything more D D. It's probably been longer than twenty minutes because I don't know. We've got all the rabbit trails. You know what? It's been weird because I'm pretty sure for the last that this is the first week in at least three weeks that we have not watched a movie. This is true. I mean, depending on when you start the week, we still have time. I mean, if I'm, we, I'm free tomorrow see. night, and we still have uh, Oklahoma to watch. Isn't that like four hours? Like three. So six with us? No. Like five and a half. Uh, okay. <clears throat> you know, fair point. Technicalities. Seven. Um, <laughs> I'm not working next week. What do I care? <laughs> so what you're telling me is if I have to get up early the next morning... <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's Thanksgiving week. Yay. It is Thanksgiving double, double. week. <gasps> okay. Ducky sent me this song. Actually, that's the other thing. Uh, I, that's the other thing. That's the other thing. So my work schedule and your work schedule are very incompatible because I work until into the evening, and you seem to get off a lot earlier than that. Now, if, if that's something that you'd like to do, watch more videos, more movies, all you got to do is let me know early in the day this week because I'm going to be free almost all day. There's a couple things I got going on. And like, it's, I'm not even going anywhere for Thanksgiving. My family's leaving me and going to Arkansas because why on earth would you want to go to Arkansas? Because there's a wedding that my sister's attached to. But I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I got, I got no plans this week. <laughs> you, okay. So did you not get in? Invited to said I, wedding? I met the lady getting married like one time uh, six years ago. I don't know her. She doesn't know me. She doesn't want me at her wedding. Yeah, don't go to the wedding. Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> Stay why, home. Anyway, why would I want to go to Arkansas? <laughs> Stay home and virtually watch movies with me, apparently. That's, I mean, happy Thanksgiving. I'm a. <gasps> no! We need to watch Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. We do need to watch Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. I should read Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. And, yeah, you should record it. 
and then post it in this chat so that there's only all one, three there's only one problem with that well i mean if i just did a if i just did a, an mp3 file then that'd be fine but if i was to actually like record it and post it on youtube i'm pretty sure someone would have a con have a uh have an objection why on earth did matthew west do a video called gobble gobble <laughs> It's amazing, and I've been singing it, and I listened to it like 12 times and drove Ducky crazy because I'm protesting early Christmas. I thought this was like, I thought this was going to be like a song drops thing because they do have a song there called song called Gobble Gobble or something like that. Wobble, wobble, wobble something like that. I forget what it's called. Um, song drops is, is, is an abomination, but it's interesting. Um, their, their best song is Tarantulas. In my opinion, it's not their most famous song, but in my opinion, it's their, it's their most, it's their best song. Wait, whose song? Song drops. Um, song drops. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna copy the link to their channel on YouTube. Speaking of tarantulas, they weren't said like necessarily tarantulas, but Ducky. When we watched the second episode of Mando. Mm hmm. <laughs> After Yoda, you know opens the egg of the spider creature mm -hmm. and eats it. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I know what this is. And she was like, what is that? And I was like, just an egg. And she's like, ew. And then they start hatching out mm -hmm. and she starts, I mean, she's screaming at this point because she is extremely arachnophobic. And she, then the big one comes out. And she's like, you know about this. And so she's like hitting me and just hiding her face and completely avoiding the entire thing. She's like, just, I don't want to see it, but I got to watch it because I want to know what happens, but I don't want to watch it because they have so many legs. And <laughs> They're not actually spiders, you know. N no, but I, I heard the podcast mm -hmm. from last week. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> they have legs and very long legs and a tiny body. Well, compared to the length of their legs, because mm. obviously they're huge. Right, right. So, so just for for clarification, because I love it, I did post this in the Discord. Anyone who's listening in on uh, any of the other podcasting sites, Spotify, whatever, Podbean. We love Podbean. Thanks for hosting us, guys. Um, not for free. We're paying for it, Dad. But <laughs> thank you for not kicking us off for having the world's worst, world's worst podcast. There we are. Um, anyway, uh, so the, the, so the, so the song is a little bit like this. He goes, tarantulas, tarantulas. Everybody loves tarantulas. If there's just fuzz where your hamster was, it's probably because of tarantulas. <laughs> and and that I mean the song just gets better from there. Um, yeah. Uh, copying and pasting to send to Ducky as we speak. Okay, doke. Um, she's going to love you. <laughs> well, a little she less. Actually, a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I guess. Yeah, you. Yeah, you're probably right. There's actually. Have you ever seen Lucas, the tarantula? Let's no, see. I didn't realize that they were naming tarantulas. I thought that's kind of a weird thing. You just kind of reserved for cats and dogs. I'm just going to... Well, I mean, people have pet tarantulas. Oh, I think I have seen this. You mean Lucas the spider? Uh, he's a tarantula. You know. But he's he's a, so cute. He's a wolf spider. I think you're right. Yeah, he's a wolf I spider. I think he is a wolf spider. Yeah, I've seen Lucas before. Yeah, I love I didn't, Lucas. Didn't know his name was Lucas, but yeah. Mm hmm I sent that to Ducky too. Have you seen real life <laughs> Lucas? <laughs> no. I posted it in the podcast this time instead of sending it to her. Um it's him. That's fine. Oh my goodness. He's so tiny. I have a wait a second, do I where is that? I'm gonna see if I have if I can find the picture real quick. I oh darn it they did that too. Um, now I would not want a spider of any sort to be crawling on me, mm -hmm. but looking at them from a distance, 
is okay. Uh, which one would it have been? Would it have been first? Maybe third? Uh, Ducky and I actually have... Thankfully, we've not had any issues this year. But we had a good run-in with... I don't know what kind of spiders they are. We thought they might have been wolf spiders. But now I'm not so sure. Okay. Because I know wolf spiders get super big. But this time of year... Well, they start small. We think... Well, yeah. I, I understand that. But we haven't seen any around our entire apartment complex that have been larger. We've just seen them... I think the biggest we've ever seen is like... A silver dollar. But okay. our back door. So if you go out our back door, we're ground level. There's not a threshold or any. I mean, there's a threshold, but it's not even a step down or anything. And then there's this little concrete slab that just runs into the yard, which tends to hold a good bit of water. And then probably 25, 30 foot from the back door is this wooded area. Mm -hmm. And. Aside from armadillos and what have you, coming up to our apartment, we have a tendency to get underneath our threshold of our door in the wintertime, biters. And so you'll open the back door and they'll be like, not even kidding, 12 or 15 just come out from under the threshold when you open the door. So this has become a recurring issue. Thankfully, we've not had the issue yet this year. But we keep a bottle of peppermint oil, like water with peppermint oil in it. And we just like spritz the whole door <laughs> with like holy water in the, the back door. Have trying you, to get rid of the spiders. Have you ever seen a cicada up close? Yes. Don't they look like Wally? Like the cartoon? Yeah. Like the. Like Wally. Wally! That's a terrible Wally. <clears throat> I feel bad for that. Um, uh, I, could, I guess I could kind of see it. Like the way their little front legs are. The, specifically their eyes. Really their eyes. So far out, it's kind of staring blankly, cutely ahead. This particular cicada that I've posted a picture here is one that landed on my sister. Which she was thrilled about, because she loves bugs. Um, mm. I can see it with that one, but that's not really what our cicadas look like. Hmm. Like that's, that's the ones that we got. Um... Let's see. At least not the ones I've seen. Ours look more like... We see the shells more than anything. Great picture. Yeah, like, we, we actually... Like, we typically don't ever see them. We, we just hear them. But uh, this one landed on my sister a couple years ago while we were out on the 4th of July. And um, it was uh, a most interesting experience. I really ours like, tends I really like to look mm, ours tend to look more like at least the ones I've seen, like I said, <clears throat> more like giant horse flies. Uh-huh. I don't think I've seen one this big, but um, <laughs> mm, that one's actually kind of cute. Ours are is that our adopted cuz? <laughs> oh wow. That's that's a huge cicada. Yeah. Like I said, I've not seen them that big, but they look more like giant horse flies um, okay. around here. I mean, the 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 perspective is a kind of is kind of skewed. Um because I was really focusing on his face because I thought he was cute. And my sister's like, step on him, step on him. I'm like, no. 
I'll have to throw this shoe away. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. He's looking um, better. Uh, I mean, as it turns out, that would not have been the biggest bug that that shoe killed. But um, that was a whole other story, right there. Uh, there's pictures of people like letting them crawl. I'm, I can't. Um. There's a, there's a limit. Yep, there is a limit. Eh. <laughs> like, I feel it crawling on me. I, I, uh, I did it, have... It's like it's like one thing when it's like a little tiny thing and you just barely notice it because it, like, it brushes a hair. That's one of the reasons why I like the hair on my arms because, and everywhere else because I, I can feel when like bugs land on me and I can get them real quick. Um, because every, every single hair is connected to a nerve. And, mm-hmm. so, and so when they land, they, you can feel it and you're like, ah, nah, and you, you will not bite me today. Um, but like when the thing that lands on you is big enough to have weight. Oh yeah. Ooh. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a line drawing place. Like you, nope, this is not acceptable. This has to stop now. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's the line. When I can feel the weight of the bug on my arm, that is too far. That that mm-hmm. that is just a little bit too far. Mm-hmm. Ah, there it is. I found the other bug before I killed it. Um, <laughs> so, do you have the um Japanese ladybugs in Michigan? Oh yeah, we used to have them really bad, but a lot of them have now died out, which is good. Um, I remember a couple of like, no, how, what, how old was I? I remember 20 years Why ago. Why did you send that? What is that bug? It's a cockroach. A... Oh, oh, that, that's, okay. that's, I... that's the no. biggest bug I've ever killed. Ah, uh, that is not okay. Why did I, ah, uh. <laughs> I'm fine. Really? What's really bad? Ugh. You're going to have to send some other stuff just so I can open that chat again. <laughs> uh, oh. I was not expecting to see that when I opened that. Gabby, that was terrible. Why did you... <laughs> you didn't uh, even warn me. <laughs> I, I, I told you I was looking for it, and you just didn't catch on to that, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. how, how, about, how, about no. giraffe, how about giraffe beetles? Giraffe beetles? I don't... Is it a bug? It I mean, is... I know it's a beetle. No, just... Stop they're, they're, sending actually bugs. Really, they're actually really cool. They they uh they uh they have long necks. And uh, it's still there. I know. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on <laughs> it. <laughs> well, work faster. All right, there we go. There we go. There's a giraffe beetle. That one picture of the cicada looks like a frog. A little bit, yeah. Like, That's not helping. Okay, I'm just gonna stop. Oh, the draft, the draft beetle is not helping. What about this? I, I wait. I have, I have just a thing. Where are my lemur pictures? Lemurs. There's my lemur pictures. Lemurs make everything better. So, <laughs> okay. Um. Ringtail. I was able to see my friend Brandon today and he actually people call him a giraffe okay um for good reason he's very tall and lanky and i mean just very much so resembles a giraffe and so we were having a conversation. Both of us have long, like super long necks. So we have this running joke that we're giraffes and everything. And today we, oh, it's a lemur. That's a, much better. A lot of lemurs. All the lemurs. That one looks kind of like a panda. It, well, it's, it's colors too. It's, it's actually called a panda lemur. Oh, cool. Okay. That's neat. Yeah. For those of you Sasquatch who don't know, well, you actually do know because I think it was brought up in the podcast. Pandas are my favorites. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but Brandon and I were talking about it today, and we were talking about um really bad pickup lines. Okay. 
and how one of the <laughs> okay the way we got on the conversation is really kind of it's a trip in itself and it's kind of funny i don't even know how we were like why we were talking about this but he said that um <clears throat> his ex-girlfriend's parents well not parents but like godparents mm -hmm. actually started dating because he had used several really really bad pickup lines one of them including um they were walking and they tripped and he like I think they went to church together or something. They somehow wound up um, tripping and he fell like on her somehow. Uh -huh. And he used, <clears throat> he used the pickup line. This makes me cringe so bad. He used the pickup line. Well, you have really good childbearing hips. And apparently that worked for whatever reason. Wow. That's, yeah, I would not work for me. I'm quite sure. No, <clears throat> no. <laughs> well, he okay. Brandon did clarify that um, it took multiple uh, attempts of him asking her out after that, and I was like, "Yeah, I still would have said no." But yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it came up that um. The probably the most memorable pickup line I've ever had someone use on me is I was standing in a crowd of people. I was at a job fair, and I mean, it was a lot of people, and I was standing in line. And this guy from across like multiple rows of people, um, kind of peeks up over everybody and sees me, and he makes eye contact with me, and he's like, this is crazy. And I was like, right? There weren't supposed to be this many people here. And he comes over to where I'm at. And I thought he was just getting in line with me because I was at the end of the line. And he starts talking to me. And he, he uses the line. You look familiar. It must be because you're tall. That's uh, odd. Like, of, of any identifying characteristic, <laughs> that is the least specific one possible. Okay, right? almost the least specific one possible. <clears throat> I mean, the way he led up to it, it was obviously he was trying to initiate a conversation and use it as a pickup line. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I'm still just, okay, um... When I think about it, and that was like two years ago, and I still just kind of am took back by it. Like, <laughs> what made you think that was a good idea to say, a good thing to say? So Brandon and I were talking about it, and the whole giraffe thing. Uh, I saw this picture, and it made me think of our conversation today. And we were talking about it. Um, And we took that story that I just told about that pickup line and did a spinoff of it. And it's like, yeah, two giraffes are hanging out in a safari field. One looks at the other and says, um, the air's thin up here. Come often. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. That's, that's, that's something right there. I mean, bad pickup lines. That was the topic of conversation. That we were having. So. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I mean, that would qualify. <coughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, it's better than, you know, how's the air up there? Because I hear that one all the time. Um, but that's not really a oh, pickup yeah. line. That's just being, you know, people being an idiot. Um, Like it's 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 not quite high enough high up wow high up <laughs> enough to be rarefied yet. But um but yeah. So So we need to talk. About Mandalorian Episode four. Okay. Because I was thinking Mandalorian, and I was like, but... 
the way you led up to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. I need. I just, I really need to make that T-shirt. So dot dot dot. So, um, I'm going to. Uh, I this is a, a topic of a conversation about the Mandalorian that I can't actually have with Masters because he doesn't know enough about it. But this is a still from episode four, and I'm posting it in the chat here. What is wrong with this picture? I mean, if I could back this up just just a, just a tiny hair more, um, it would really be obvious. I mean, she's completely flagging him. Exactly. Uh, and like, and like, this is after she like com- halfway completes her swing. Like, she went straight across his chest and his face, like in this motion, and like everybody starts doing this. Like everybody starts doing this in this episode. And I'm like, oh. Man, this is just painful to watch. I can't do this. I just can't do it. Like, I did. <laughs> like, like it's so like I I I I I hyperanalyze movies and TV shows and everything else while they're happening, and it's just a thing that happens. And I'm watching this. And I'm like, oh god, he's gonna sh-. like the blue guy is just the worst. Like every move he makes, he's. <laughs> like okay, I got this. Where is it? Uh, here we go. Let me let me make a new new one here. <laughs> Just clip this I, out here. Like Ducky's actually the one that pointed that out. She was like, she completely just like what? What I is mean... muzzle control? Look at look at where he's pointing that. He's right. He's pointing it right at her back. There is no control whatsoever. His next movement is just like this wild flailing about. Yeah, she pointed it out to me, and for the rest of the movie, all I could think about was. I mean, how are they collectively not dead? I, I mean, I understand. from each other. <laughs> Leave the stormtroopers out of it. Just, just Why? from from each other pointing guns at each other. Just like, no, this is I not mean, how this works. Okay, granted, they can aim and they have, you know, for the most part. But yeah. they make an attempt. Uh, it's it's not, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Mando's. Bottom line, his marksmanship is on point. Of course, it has to be. He's it's it's quite literally inhuman. I mean, yeah, it has to be. <laughs> like, like, uh, let me let me get it here. I I, I just got to the point. Um, right, where is it? So he comes flying up out of the shaft and nails both of these stormtroopers in center mass while flying with a hand pistol like like what (laughs) that does no (laughs) that does not happen i'm sorry that don't happen like at all (laughs) i mean okay if you're looking at it from a logistical standpoint and everything like they're they're nine (laughs) feet apart they're not. They are social distance proper plus some extra. What? <laughs> <laughs> social distance. <laughs> um, okay, but if you're looking at it from that standpoint, and he's I apparently mean, flying fast often, enough to beat speeders back to wherever they are. <laughs> but how often do we have people flying? You know that ha- in real life, in reality, people flying with a jetpack while shooting anyways so this whole scenario is like you can't compare it to real life Physic, physics in physics. in in star wars are at least presented to work in somewhat the same way as they work everywhere else except you know when you look at the force <laughs> the, the force can can be explained away because that is a fantasical element star wars is not science fiction star wars is science fantasy the parts of Star Wars that do cross over into science fiction, blaster pistols, lightsabers, even things like that, those have to still abide by some level of rules. That ain't got no rules. <laughs> like, at all. It's cinemagic. <laughs> to say nothing of the, of the part where, like, getting onto the speeder, like, she is driving an armored transport. She pulls up behind Dude. the two guys... In full view of the stormtroopers. And she's like, hey, get on. 
don't worry. Just turn your back towards the people who are shooting at you. Yeah. All that too. And I'm like, and I'm like who's going to cover a, you? And she clearly demonstrates just a few seconds after this the ability to turn it around. Like Why she could not? have gotten right in front of them and they could have just jumped over those crates. And, <laughs> and, here's, and here's the other thing. Just, just throwing us out here. I know, again, this is the nerdy part of Star Wars. This particular vehicle is designed very much like a lot of modern minivans are. It has doors on both sides for ease of access. <laughs> so she could, didn't even fact- have to turn it around. She could just turned it and gotten in front of them. I mean... <laughs> and clearly the blaster bolts aren't doing anything to the transport. Clearly that's there not an issue. There a lot of... Okay. Overall, the content of this episode, the way it led up to the continuation of the storyline and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, I don't have the best memory to discuss all of that thoroughly, mm-hmm. like Masters would. But, I mean, storyline, great. The details of it, I'm sorry. It just didn't make sense. It didn't flow well with some of the acting in this episode. I was kind of disappointed in... I don't remember her name, but... Gina Carano? Yeah. I I was kind of disappointed in her acting in this, to be completely honest. I agree. Okay, so I And the agree. lines, too, were choppy. The, the, so, I... I think I know why this episode falls flat. There's no reason why this episode had to be as flat as it was. There's a lot of really good things in it that should have, like, propped it up. But this one in particular, I think, might be the weakest showing from The Mandalorian yet. Um, Mm -hmm. There's no real sense of tension. Like, at all. Throughout the entire thing. Um, Some of the acting, like you said, falls flat. Uh, Gino Carano. There's a couple spots where she, where like... Where, like, if this was a D&D campaign and someone was playing her character, her character definitely would not have done the thing that she did. Um, yeah, like that's like there, there's a couple of out of character moments for her, like when uh, they are showing, like when he's landing his rust bucket of a ship, all failing wired together. She has this ridiculously over the top grin on her face, which I have a perfect picture of now. Um, are you just skipping through the episode looking for? flaws i'm no i'm i'm remembering the flaws and i'm pulling them out here so like like this is over the top like you can smile you can be happy but that's like that's like way too happy that's like she drank something before he got here and she's still happy from that and now (laughs) and now she's like oh this guy is coming i hope i don't get shot at again like (laughs) no see my thought when i saw that was Oh, she's got a little crush going on. That was also my thing. And I'm like, okay, I can roll with that. But it's also over the top. Okay, but, oh, wait a second. I lost it. Where is it? Right, right. Where is it? There. A little farther up. 12.32. I need... I mean, I really... Her lines and also... um... Oh, uh, uh, Grief Karga, the, the, the other guy. Yeah, I was just not really, they just didn't flow well. And so I think I know what happened here. And, and, I, and I can, and I hate to say this because I am pretty sure I know exactly what the problem is. And I just, and I just need one more screen grab to make it happen. I'm pretty sure that this is the problem with the entire episode. And I love Carl Weathers, but I don't think he is up to snuff as a director. <clears throat> so this is where you're going to have to elaborate a little bit, whereas Masters would be able to fill in the blanks because I don't... <laughs> no, he, no, no, he wouldn't because he doesn't know who Carl Weathers yeah. is either. But you do know who yeah. Carl Weathers is. You just don't know that you know who Carl Weathers is. Who's Carl... Who's Carl Weathers? Carl Weathers is Grief Karga. He is the the magistrate now of this planet. So he is the other guy whose lines were falling flat. So yeah, when when both when 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 you think of the the dynamic duo, he is the one on the right. Um, 
Yeah. And like, so there's a, there's a, there's this tendency and you, and you see this, like you mostly see this with like high school plays, things like that, that were like written and directed by one of the high school kids. And I don't want to say that because it sounds really bad. That sounds really bad. Um, Carl Weathers is a fantastic actor and I really like him, but I, but there's a problem when you direct yourself because you don't know where you've gone wrong. And every director should always have someone else directing them if they are going to be in their movie. Uh, I, I agree. And and I think that that shows very clearly in this episode because it's a serviceable performance. But I have like I've seen him do so much better. I, like I I have I have like with my eyes I've seen him do so much better. I and, mean- and 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 because he's the director here. It's kind of like he he didn't really know how to really play with with all of his different um all the different pieces that he had. Um, there's a there's mm-hmm. a cu- there's a couple shots in here that are just beautiful. Um, and I really like what he did with those. I think he did um as- aside from directing proper blaster combat. Um, oh, this just makes me happy. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. And. I mean, like this, this, this is one of those things that just makes me happy. And this, and like, there are some things that he directs very well. This is one of the best directed shots in the entire episode. And it is beautiful. And I love it because it's so happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I loved. Okay. The child, you know, baby Yoda, that's yeah. not baby Yoda. In that episode was the absolute best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it really shows the human aspect of Mando, too. Like, when he spit up and he stole the cookies. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> I was sitting there the whole time, and I was like, if I had the force, the power of the force, I would do that. I, I, I would use it to get cookies. Bottom line. <laughs> Above all else, it would be, there, there would be cookies involved here somewhere. Or ice cream, or oh. you know, cookies with ice cream. <laughs> that that was one of the things on on Tuesday. Ah, darn it! Sit up. On Tuesday, I had a rough day, and like, it it was just it was just just a rough day, and I need and like, have you ever had one of those things where it's like you're not a stress eater, but you have decided that for right now you're going to stress eat? <laughs> it's usually ice cream, and um, while I'm taking a bath. <laughs> that is a very interesting combination. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cleopatra, if you want to have a cream bath, who am I to say no? <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> like I also really like that that this maneuver that they pull off here with the, we actually like, see the oh. flaps opening the maneuver. That's great. But anyway, go ahead. Please tell us more about your ice cream baths. <laughs> that sounds like a totally legitimate thing. No, okay, think about it. I don't. Also. Um, going back to Hannah and I. Wait a second. One of Wait the a second. That, Question: Do you have a floating bowl? Oh, I wish. <laughs> okay. okay. One of the best things. The okay, ice cream. While you're like sitting in a hot tub, is the best thing ever because you're in a hot tub and it's just. I I assume you've been in a hot tub. Have uh, you? It has been many years, but yes. Okay, well, just that you're just, I don't know, it's just warm and it feels good, but you're hot at the same time. So you might be sweating, but it feels really good because it's hot water and the steam and everything. Mm -hmm. So imagine that. And then the cold, crisp, icy sensation of the ice cream just like going down your throat and just settling and the sweetness of that and just, oh, it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And... So, I mean, Hannah and I have snuck cartons of ice cream to, like, a hotel hot tub more than once. But <laughs> but when I'm at home, I will spend 30-plus minutes in the bathtub just detoxing, watching um, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody or something from my childhood to just hide from life. Okay. So... That combined with, okay, 
I'm going to indulge in ice cream, which is my go-to stress eating snack because it's ice cream and heavenly combined with all of the senses and everything that's just like when you're in like a hot bath or whatever it's just it's just really relaxing and just great and it is my like aside from you know jesus (laughs) that is my happy place (laughs) Right, right, right. I mean, that is my ideal happy place. That and then riding in my dad's 68 Chevy pickup with Mm -hmm. a Dr. Pepper in a glass bottle. But yeah, if you have a, if you ever have the opportunity to sit in a hot tub and eat ice cream, especially when it's cold outside and it's dark, do it. Gotcha. Gotcha. I must. Wait. What, what if I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna comment on the, uh, the the practices of things in the South, but I am now curious about this because you just said it has to be dark outside. Do you have a window in your bathroom? No. Okay, I'm saying hot tub. Oh, okay. I'm like, okay. I, no. It took me a second to catch up there. I was, I was confused. <laughs> I was confused. I'm unfamiliar with the practices of the South. I'm like, are you saying that you sit? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I feel like something just happened that I'm <laughs> quite curious about now. Um, Ducky just. <laughs> so I've got a headset on, and yes. I can't hear anything. And I look up, and Ducky's just. <laughs> Just standing there. No, you're gonna do it. Oh, my heart just jumped out of my chest. I'm sorry I screamed in your ear, and also sorry to any listeners who actually, they might have a- screamed. At. A- actually, here, here's the beauty of it. Now that you have a more legitimate microphone, it dampens that sound. Oh, yay! So you didn't hear my heart jump out of my chest. Oh, we heard like... that. We heard that. It just didn't hurt when it happened. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, good to know. Mm -hmm. (sighs) That was eventful. Oh, very much so. (laughs) Good night. (sighs) But yeah, what I was saying is, uh, oh, hold on, let me. I need a defibrillator. (laughs) Clear. Oh. uh. Not a demon, a defibrillator. You know, run. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> potato, potato. Um, yeah, so... Uh, this did come to mind when I was looking at places for our group to book for our trip to Utah. Yes. As you pointed out um, when we spoke about it before. But yeah, the hot tub... You know, mm-hmm. if it's 50 degrees outside or whatever, there's a hot tub, I'm probably going to buy ice cream. And, you know, if it's 1 a.m. and, you know, I will probably go, you know, and sit in the hot tub and eat ice cream. Say, May or April in Utah, it's probably going to be like 80. <laughs> well, see, I have hopes because... Mm-hmm. Well, I guess at night it will it, be nice. Actually, actually, yeah, the, the night it's the desert, so yeah, it'll probably get a lot colder. Take it back. Take yeah, action. that's why I was like, you know, it'll probably cool down, mm-hmm. cool off at like one a.m. Um, but yeah, at any other time it would be too hot to sit in a hot tub. Also, this is just one of the most. Again, there's a couple things in here where like. They nailed the photography. They, they just nailed the scene. Like Baby Yoda trying to fix the ship. That's that's great. That was... Oh my goodness, that was phenomenal. They did a great job with putting Yoda into this... Into that episode. Mm-hmm. Without him having to be a major part of it. Because, I mean, he couldn't really be. Right. The way things played out. Um... um. But yeah, there, there, there's, 
If only they'd have done as well with everybody else. <laughs> right? The character that has no line <laughs> was phenomenal. Where is it? Where is it? The, the character that's actually not even a person, but a puppet, you know, you that know. puppeteer was on par. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was just nailing it today. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Just... And then I I don't like I don't even know what to say because like he was perfect and like some of the action sequences were really good except for the part where they're pointing guns at each other, but mm -hmm. like which is again pointing guns at each other just just right like the point have you ever seen a, a claymore? No. Okay, so a claymore mine has this thing printed on it on the front of it. It says this this end or like this side towards enemy or something like that. Uh. Let me find it. Claymore mine. Here we go. Now, not the anime. Darn it. <laughs> there we are. Oh. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> um All right. So, this is this is this is your standard claymore mine. It's it's beautiful. It, it, the instructions are printed right on the plastic. It says uh front towards enemy. <laughs> Like, <laughs> because apparently that's difficult. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would rather be clear about it than not clear. I mean, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind when I see this is like the McDonald's coffee cups that have the warning it's hot label. <laughs> okay, well there, I... At first, Except... I, like I know, I know the story behind that, like why those are now printed on there, and that's actually like horrifically bad. There's a reason that the the coffee cups say that they're hot. Um, yeah. Um, you want to know why the coffee cups are hot? Or, or that... I mean, I assumed you were just gonna. Oh, okay. So <laughs> there is a landmark legal case which is referred to as Stella's Hot Coffee. And it was I actually heard of this. Okay, you've heard Continue. of it. Continue. So, so yeah. Uh, so Stella was a lady. That's probably not her real name. She went to McDonald's. She ordered a coffee. The lid was not put on properly when they handed it to her. And so when it came into her hand, she bobbled a little bit. The lid came off. The hot coffee splashed on her lap. She was an older woman. And it landed on her. And it was like when their machines dispensed it previously, they dispensed it at like 210 degrees. Mm -hmm. that laying directly on your skin and you're not really able to do anything there because you're like strapped into the car and you can't like take clothes off because it's hot coffee and then so she ended up having like second and third degree burns over like 60% of her body yeah kind of an issue so they did some investigation they found out that McDonald's coffee was coming out of the machine at 210 degrees and like it had not cooled off all that much by the time someone got it um, they did, they had it that hot because the idea was that people weren't going to drink it immediately. They were going to give it to them that hot and then it would have cooled off sufficiently for them to be able to drink it by the time they got to work. That was their mindset. That's not what people do. People get the hot coffee. They put it in the cup holder. They say, thank you very much. They drive out before they hit the uh, end of the exit ramp. They're drinking their coffee. That's how, that's how that works. Because, <laughs> yeah. Cause you want it before you get to the office. Like, we drive so safely, don't we? Ha ha ha. Um, so in essence, McDonald's was trying to look out for the health and well being of safe drivers everywhere. Right. Um So apparently Sasquatch has Halloween costumes for his Roomba. So do I. <laughs> uh, that's that's amazing. Actually, it's only, there's one even better. We can tie D and D back into this. Please do. Boom! Literally. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, yes. My mom, she calls her room the Herbie, uh -huh. like the car. Right. And... I was actually just going to post that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to watch that. Uh... 
And she's she's funny too because she will talk about it like it's a dog or a person. Like, yeah, I was um I turned Herbie on the other day and I just let him run around the house and he fell down the stairs and I had to pick him up and he got stuck in the corner. <laughs> so for the first like we got it I think last year or the year before for Christmas. And so for the first four months that she had him, that Mm-hmm. After Michaela and I moved out, that was all she would talk about. It's just Herbie. Okay. And how um, her little rat of a dog um, would bark at it and chase it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, oh. oh. That makes me think of Smart House. Uh huh. Do you remember that Disney movie? I heard of it, never saw it. You've never seen Smart House. Never seen Smart House. Oh, basically, it's Alexa takes over the entire house and becomes a holograph and like tries to be a mom and is it's really quite terrifying. And if people who are coming up with all this electronic stuff would pay more attention to movies like that, then we would not have the technology we have today that could potentially take over our household and the world. I'm I'm traumatized from that movie. I don't want Alexa because of that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. It's, it's, it's kind of an an invention. Wow. No, and inevitability at some point we're all going to be taken over by the um uh by the by the technology it's going to happen i mean it i'm not going to get on that tangent i don't want to psych myself up and stress myself out about things that i'm making up in my head um okay so on Yes. A semi-different note. Okay. Ducky bought this thing today. There's a local comic book store, and she started working at the coffee shop across the street, so she walked over after work and mm-hmm. found this. This. And so you look at it one way. Okay. And she set it down on my desk right in front of me. Oh, I know and so I'm staring at it and I see Yoda uh-huh. and then I'm like, oh, that's cool. What is this? And I pick it up and I see this. Uh-huh. Yep. And I mean, it kind of sucked me out for a second, but I mean, I realize now how it works. It's got mm-hmm. the mirror, mm-hmm. but I mean, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very inventive. I, in the laziest possible way, but yes, that's very inventive. Um, uh, yeah. Very interesting. So what? Was there anything good about your week? Because you're acting like there wasn't. I mean, it was just kind of like a meh. There's a, so there's just some some drama and things that happened. Mike Pastor's COVID, just all kinds of weirdness happening. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There we go. That's the that's the picture I was trying to get of her. Uh, darn it. That there's the exaggerated ex- exaggerated smile, but a little bit less so. This one almost this one almost seems like properly genuine. Now that I've you know dunked on her for several minutes um like that that's like that's like a legitimate smile that's like oh hi oh and she's about to like you look down at baby yoda so it makes sense um but uh yeah i'm sorry oh by the way blue guy can't remember his name i can't either i was gonna ask you uh give me a second i will find his name <clears throat> it will be a thing do 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 yeah the okay i'm gonna is this accurate 
I uh, found this. And... Yeah, that's that's Michigan. Like, <laughs> uh, I might actually know roughly where that is. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah i was actually you know i've driven past that road multiple times <laughs> yeah um so do y'all have i mean is salt life brand a thing in michigan it's not a brand it's just a it's just a thing um like we're when it gets cold, it snows, and then it hits the roads, and when it hits the roads, it melts, and when it melts, it eventually refreezes, and when it refreezes, it turns to ice, and the way that we keep it from turning to ice, we put salt down, which no. <laughs> eats the roads and makes them holy roads. You know what I mean by Salt Life brand, right? Like No, not at all. Ah, uh -huh. okay, so you don't. Okay, so there is a clothing line. Okay. And super overpriced t-shirts, basically. That is Salt Life. And what is the guy's name? There's an artist that does all of these big paintings and stuff of... Um, Mithral, D that's his name. Do what? Uh, the name of the blue guy's name is Mithral. He's definitely going to betray everyone. Just Like menthol, but Mithral. Mithral. Well, it's like Mithril, like uh, like from Lord of the Rings, Mithril armor, Mithril super purified silver, but it's M-Y-T-H-R-O-L, so it's Mithral. Uh, like, okay. But yeah. All right, so okay. Salt Life Ministers. What's this? Open Sea. Ah! Yeah. This kind of shows the difference in cultures from the north from the south because we have... <laughs> salt Life actually does mean something different. Very different in the north versus the south. So and, this is like the C, gotcha. Yeah, there's this guy, his name's Guy Harvey, and he's an artist, does deep sea fishing paintings and all of the things. And he actually had the art that's on these shirts, it's his. Gotcha. Let me find some of his art. It's pretty cool. Like I'm 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 on there right now, I'm looking. No, I mean... Oh, his, his actual... Artwork. His actual art, okay. His actual artwork. So, yeah, I'm like... <clears throat> this is not the salt line. Like, in case you weren't aware, Michigan is surrounded by water. Fresh water. So we would have no purpose of having a Salt Life t-shirt in reference to salt water. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> just just pointing that out. They, like again, so I'm, I'm still I'm still looking through all this uh, through the episode. I'm like, they have some really good shots. Like this is a great great shot. I so he has he has some good photography sense, but he needs better. He needs a bit of work working with actors, uh, especially himself, because some of his lines fell very flat, um, especially some of his lines. Okay. Yeah, there's his artwork. My dad You're trying would... to talk about Mando, and I'm just. Oh no, on... I'm, I'm 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 on both of these right now. My dad would love this artwork. Um, if well, okay, not not necessarily true. My dad likes watercolors like this. Um, but he prefers the subjects to be trains. Uh -huh. Wait, wait, wait! I'm looking at these. I'm looking at these prices on this thing. Holy Moses! Does this guy think his stuff is good? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not cheap. Streamer Trail and Ginger, two thousand dollars. Cuba, There's actually. Sharks and Rays, eight thousand five hundred dollars. 
I mean, he's a deep sea fisherman and he <laughs> uh, draws his and paints his catches. Run Ca- for it. $12,000. I, I mean, like, is he, is he fishing with one hand and painting with the other? Is that his shtick? <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a restaurant called Rum Fish Grill that my family and I have been to in St. Peach. Uh-huh. St. Uh, Pete beach florida and they have a big huge fish tank in the middle of the restaurant and his artwork everywhere it's i mean it's kind of cool i mean starve cost on that thing must have been half a million dollars in art killer whale and tuna eighty five thousand dollars holy cow what are the details on this monstrosity? Which one are you looking at? Okay, it's big. It's 15 by 59 inches. It's it's a it's a big one. Uh Here, let me grab it. Or grab a picture of it. That that Sasquatch posted. Yeah. Um I mean that's like a thousand percent accurate. That's go. that is so funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's charging eighty five thousand dollars for that. And I understand that is a gigantic canvas and it takes a long time just to put that much paint on there. But wow. Eighty-five thousand dollars. I like. I, I you should have gave up. Uh, you should have gave up violin and started painting. <laughs> like I didn't. I didn't realize that people were making paintings today that were actually worth that much. Oh yeah. I, I, I assumed to get. A, I, I assumed that all paintings were only viable for achieving that level of cash after you died. <sighs> no, Abraham Hunter, he's another popular artist that I like to follow. Mm-hmm. He, his um, prints run for about 500, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know about his originals, but do you know who Thomas Kincaid is? Yes. Okay. We actually have a Thomas Kincaid print at my church right now. Yeah, my mom has several too. He actually, so Abraham Hunter, he is has been called the new Thomas Kincaid. Okay. And does he also very, hide his wife's name in every one of his paintings? He has something else that he does. I can't remember what it is though. But his, he has a story with most of his artwork, and he has one. Let me see if I can find it. It's really cool. It's like the Passover cup, Jesus' Passover cup, and then I think a bowl of grapes. And you can actually, he put the reflection of Jesus in the cup of wine. Mm hmm. And he has a whole story with it and the inspiration of how he came up with that painting and everything. It's pretty cool. Hmm. But, yeah, his... These are wall plaques. His website's weird. But he's another really good artist. What's his name again? Uh, Abraham Hunter. I'll post the link to his site. I follow him on Instagram and it's a lot more personable, I guess. So this, okay, so all right, this is less impressionism and more, yeah, this these, these do look like Thomas Kincaid paintings. These are amazing. Mm-hmm. I, he's a phenomenal artist and Ducky and my mom have actually met him in person because he's based out of Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and mm-hmm. Smoky Mountains. That's like our go to because it's four hours from here. And 
there's Dollywood and all kinds of other stuff in the area. Have you seen his before and after the flood? Abraham Hunters? Yeah. Mm-mm. The after the one looks to me looks better, but the before the one's also kind of interesting. I'm trying to sort of navigate his website currently and I mean, talk I at s- the same time. I just went on I just went on Google Images and pulled stuff up. <laughs> ah, gotcha. I'm a cheater. <laughs> I was so, looking at it for like a price reference, but the only thing there's pandas. There's pandas in both of them. In bo- there's only one in the second. What is up with that? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem because that's the after the flood one. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there should at least be baby pandas somewhere. What's happened to the may, pandas? May, maybe she's extinct. maybe she's pregnant. We don't know what happened. You know, there's. So... <laughs> oh man, that is a this is a great one. I like this. This is, is premium. Look at just look at the black bear. Look at the black bear. Uh, that's such a Smoky Mountain Gatlinburg photo, though. It, it's a it's a painting. It's not a, not a photo. Eh, image there we go like th- th- that could that could be michigan so i'm claiming it for michigan <laughs> do y'all have a lot of black bears oh uh, we have or... we have we don't have a lot of black bears but we have enough black bears <laughs> oh that's great sass <clears throat> Borderline sacrilegious, but it's okay. <laughs> I mean, my pastor, really would, happened to- my pastor would laugh at that. He went down to the Creation Museum somewhere, one of them, I'm not sure which one. And while he was down there, uh, yeah, my, my pastor is an old earth creationist, um, if you know the difference between that. Mm, not really. So he believes that God created all things not using any sort of evolutionary practices, but he does believe that the universe is very old. Um, somewhere around, I think, three to four billion years, something like that. Yeah. And, there's, and there's reasons for him believing that, and he is by far the minority opinion among all the ministers that I know. But he has, he has some very interesting points. Um, and some of them are, are pretty hard to argue with. Uh, from a biblical standpoint. Um, but that notwithstanding, what was withstanding is that he is uh, generally of the opinion that, um, you know, there were no dinosaurs on the ark, that they would have all died out beforehand. Um, and so when they get on the ark, uh, at this particular creation museum, they had actually at the, at the end of the crusade, uh, when, the, when he was at the creation museum, one of the pictures that he saw was of like these two velociraptors that were like being offered up as a sacrifice by Noah and he saw it and he's like oh that's really stupid I I'm not going to say anything but his daughter who he has you know raised up well um (laughs) she takes one look at it and she goes well that didn't happen (laughs) (laughs) like really loud and he just starts laughing um because what else are you going to do right um, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the cat. The cat was That's, great. Yeah, I think Sass is just looking up, um, Noah's Ark memes. At the we got him on something. It happens. Sass, we appreciate you so much. That's. And you don't. You're just posting Instagram links. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I did. Because it's got the story yeah. of this. I mean, uh, his, like I said, his Instagram, that's where he posts the stories of everything that he has, like the reasoning behind his artwork and everything. Mm-hmm. And he's got some videos of him working on some stuff, too. Mm -hmm. I'm just Ducky and my mom went my mom has two original prints I think Mm -hmm. yeah two original prints that she bought those are the ones that were 500 bucks and 
when she went and got him, he was doing a signing. Yeah. And so he actually sketched a image on the back of both of them and signed it. So that was pretty cool. So you have an Abraham Hunter original. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Two, actually, that I will be asking my mother for. <laughs> <laughs> Get that in early. Before, uh-huh. be- before there's a fight over that. Remember the story well, of the ice cream scoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the way that would probably work is she would probably give each of us one. Because mm. there's two. He's a really good family guy, too. Like, here's a picture of him. Yeah, I... I with, okay, no, go ahead. Um, holding his baby while he paints. But <laughs> I've got to work on my dad's Christmas present that my mom wants me to do. Of, um, let me see if I can find a picture of my dad's barn. Uh huh. So my mom wants me to paint a picture of the barn for my dad for Christmas and put his 68 Chevy pickup and the old Ford tractor in like in front of the barn somewhere. Right. And this barn. My grandparents purchased the land and it had an old dairy barn on it that is over a hundred years old. Mm-hmm. And when the tornado came through it I mean the it's over a hundred years old. The barn had seen better days before the tornado came through, but the tornado coming through has just made it even more sketchy and Yep. Really needs torn down. And I mean, to my dad, that's his childhood. Mm-hmm. And so it's become kind of a ongoing thing with my mom and dad. And she's like, we need to get rid of it because it's hazard. My dad's like, but I don't want to. And yeah. Hmm. Of course, I can't find it. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it's hard to let things like that go. Um, particularly things that have lasting family attachments to them my Mm -hmm. grandmother's house in in traverse city uh, we actually just sold that couple eh, beginning the end of last year beginning of this year and like it was a house that my grandfather he did not build it (laughs) that's that's sort of a family tradition (laughs) we don't build things we don't fix things we pay people to do that no not that we're above it we just don't know how (laughs) And we know this, and we're okay with that. Um, so, <laughs> so he paid. To, so he paid to get this house built, and it it is like the perfect house, um, in terms of layout and everything else that you could have ever want. It has like a screen in back porch with these amazing windows on it that are, like, like when my uncle went and built his house, he specifically found out what the windows were so he could have them in his house too. Like it, it's pretty amazing. Um, our family obsesses over small things. <laughs> well, you have to obsess over something, I guess. Windows, you know, uh, uh, yeah, moving on anyway. Uh, so we, um, but just this great house, great location, wooded area. Um, just, just a beautiful, beautiful house. Like you can see, a, a Grand Traverse Bay from one of the wind from the front window. It's it's well you could see it before they built the houses that kind of blocks some of the view. You can still kind of see it if you stand just in the right spot, and there aren't too many leaves on the tree across the street. 
<laughs> but before it was like a, a straight view down to the down to the water, um, kind of up on this hill. And by kind of up on the hill, I mean if you're coming down the hill, and you aren't breaking already, you're gonna be in the water. <laughs> Because you're not going to be able to stop in time. But um, it's a steep hill. But uh, fantastic place. Um, oh, that's that's a very nice barn. I was not looking at that. I was had my glasses off and I had my face in my hand as I was telling the story from my family uh, heritage house, well, which we've now sold. And it's it was I am it, listening. yeah, and it's it's kind of tough to let to just let something like that go because there is history there, like. When I was two years old, my grandfather started teaching me how to play poker, and we played poker every time we went up there from then on until he died. Um, like not for money, like but for just for, just for like we didn't gamble much. <laughs> he like when we beat him like four years in a row. He talked about taking me and my sister to the casino to get some money back, but um, yeah, we won his cat one year. That was fun. Um, we did you not. Won his cat. We won his cat. He had a cat, um, and uh, his he ran out of chips, and so he leveraged his cat to get more chips, and then we won those chips. So we won the cat. <laughs> um, but of course, what did mom say about that? <laughs> mom said, "Well, we'll leave it up here for for a granddaddy to take care of while while we go back and take care of our two kitties." And we're like, "But no, we won his cat." <laughs> He's rightfully ours. He wagered him away. We we were smart enough to know how this worked. We just got ourselves a new cat. We're taking this thing home. Uh, did you? No. <laughs> Mom had the final say. Mom had the final say. Yeah. Yeah. There was no way no way around that. Um. But. Uh, but yeah. So we we you know. So there's like I, I, there are multiple lifetimes worth of memories built into that house, and it was hard to see it go. But I mean, there's not there's only so nobody was in a nobody in the family was in a position to take it over, and so you have to let it go. And so things like this, which are in a position, and that is a very shallow roof. Like, how long did you guys have to wait for snow to fall in in Alabama to actually be on the roof of that barn? As I'm taking in more of the details. I mean, uh, I think it had snowed all night. Like, you folks have almost got three inches there. That's got to be like a record or something in Alabama. I mean, yeah. And... Okay, look at the roads. I don't know if you can zoom in or not, but I, do you see the the slush? Like, can you see the wetness of it? Yeah. What is y'all snow like when it's on the road? About like that. So it's like like slush, wet and yeah, yeah. It okay. looks it looks exactly like that. <laughs> For about three months out of the year. Four months out of the year. <laughs> well, I mean, I've heard horror stories of, well, not horror stories, but just people complaining like, well, I lived in Michigan and y'all have three inches of snow and it shuts down everything. Because when we have that much snow, I mean, Walmart's the only thing that's open. Like, I don't drop below 70 on the freeway for anything less than six inches. What do y'all do for the roads? Just ice? They just throw salt on them, and then you drive. I mean, yeah, that's what I meant. Just salt. Salt them and drive them. Like we we cannot shut down the state from. Whoa, that's a controversial statement. <laughs> <laughs> we can't <laughs> shut down. <laughs> we can't shut down the state from November to April every year. It just doesn't work. <laughs> oh. A whole new world. Banned. Uh, welcome to 2020. <laughs> like, we just got to do with it. It's like, so you know, if it gets real icy or something, you slow down. If it gets really icy, you 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 do stay home. You call in and be like, hey, I, I'm, I, I just did three donuts down I-75. I'm not going to make it. Uh, <laughs> I mean... Okay, this is Alabama. The, 
I mean, people were legitimately stranded. I think this is actually when that picture was taken. I just Googled it. But it shut down the interstate. Mm-hmm. Completely. So. For like, for that? Yeah. Like, you can still see grass in the median. It gets, I mean, okay. This is also, this is, these are all news headlines and stuff. This is what was happening. When that snow came in. I'm pretty sure that's what, like, stuff like this was causing the traffic jams and everything. And people were having to get out and walk miles to get off of the road. So, this is actually a road that I drive down frequently. This is a picture from I don't know what year. Doesn't matter. Like, this is normal. (laughs) Which they then salt. Which leads to this. So, (laughs) (laughs) Some you lose some. (laughs) Like, I mean, wow. Did I tell you, did I tell you the story about driving through or did I tell, I know I told it recently. I don't remember where I told it. The story about driving through upstate New York and the rough roads. Oh yeah. And the sign, um, yeah, go ahead and tell it again. So so last year I drive out to Boston to meet with monkey and D mill and piratic, a bunch of other folks. And, uh, Kuya was out there and, I was driving back through upstate New York from Boston, New Hampshire area and going through upstate New York. It comes to this place. It says, Hey, rough roads ahead, reduce speed. I'm like, okay, well, uh, when I get there, I'll reduce speed. And I drove for like 45 minutes and never encountered the rough roads. And 45 minutes later, it pops up. Hey, end of rough roads. I'm like, those are better than our good roads in Michigan. (laughs) Like, way better than our good roads in Michigan. There was no bumping. There was no gigantic craters. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? We actually like it when it snows. It fills the potholes in. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. For us, okay, our roads look like that just because we have uh sucky funding <laughs> um sucky funding oh we do i too. mean they just i really don't know what the issue is with our roads and stuff around here because like our main highways that go through towns they keep those pretty up to date mm-hmm. but any road off of the main highway mm-hmm it's, I mean, there's potholes like that, like crazy. And especially when you get into county roads. Okay. They're just, or side streets like downtown and stuff, pretty much anywhere. It's, I mean, it, they're just potholes everywhere. And then you go up to Bryant and you're driving on um, what used to be asphalt, but is now just gravel. And mm-hmm. you just don't question it. You just keep going. Yep. We got we got we got a couple places like that. They're really far out of like the main cities, but we have a couple places like that. Um, the tr- the thing is, the stuff outside of the main cities lasts so much longer because we don't have you know. Michigan, Detroit is the motor city, and we have the number of cars to prove it. Like we have more cars per capita in Detroit and in Michigan than anywhere else. And we have our big three automakers lobbying the state over and over and over again to prevent us from having any sort of comprehensive or cohesive um, uh, public transport. So you have to have a car. And as soon as you have to have a car, everybody in your family has to have a car. Because you don't all go to the same place all the time mm-hmm. and like you can't leave someone stranded at home and you can't have them waiting four hours in the middle of a blizzard 
to get picked up because, you know, 30 minutes to Troy from Auburn Hills, or that's actually like 10 minutes, never mind. But like, you know, 30 minutes from one place to the next turns into four hours when it's actually icy. And the thing is, not everybody in Michigan is actually a good driver. I mean, okay, let me back that up. Most people in Michigan are terrible drivers. (laughs) And some of them are not actually aware of how to keep their car safe on the road in snow. Most of them are actually pretty good at at being able to manage things. Like, it's like one in 500 that you're going to encounter who doesn't have any really good idea how to maneuver through things on, um, on icy roads. But that one in 500, considering the fact that you could pass easily in your car, like... 3,000 people on your way to or from work, yeah, you're going to encounter some idiots just by happenstance. And whether it's the guy in his four-wheel truck who's trying to, like, drive across cars to get where he's going, or the guy who's driving five miles an hour and not realizing that, yes, you can actually touch the gas pedal without sliding into the bank across the street both like we have both kinds and they're usually right next to each other or lined up but two kinds like you'll have four of the trucks who are just like plowing the road without plows or you'll have five of these guys who are driving five miles an hour and they're all the way across the road and you can't get around them and you're like i need to be at work five minutes ago pal move it um not that i've ever said that of course <laughs> never not that i have any sort of deep root frustration or have sometimes wondered whether it'd be like to be able to get like one of those uh, like con- construction flippers on the front of my car. So we just move them out. Certainly not any of that either. But um, <laughs> just bulldoze them. Pretty much. So, what kind of car do you have? I have a 2008 Toyota Rav4 Limited. Um. Uh, let's see here. I mean, what would be ideal for driving in Michigan? Front wheel drive. That's really all you need. Oh. Um, rear wheel drive is is bad. That because you're pushing the car rather than pulling the car, and if you yeah. push, then the front wheels will start to sway back and forth. Um, if you are pulling the car with the front wheels, it works way better. Um, four wheel drive is not really necessary. I have it. I think it works. I'm not actually sure. I've. It has a it has a governor on it, so if you go above forty miles an hour, it clicks off. So that's practically useless to me. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like, why am I slowing down to forty? Yeah, this is a dirt road with six inches of snow on it. Here we go. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, that that is the car I have. The car I had before was probably actually even better in the snow because it was lower to the ground and had um, a V8 in it, <laughs> which was a problem. <laughs> um, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, my dad has a Chevy Caprice that has a V8 mm-hmm. engine, mm-hmm. and that thing will get up and go, but it looks like a grandma gra- gangster car. Yeah, I used to have almost this exact car, if not that exact car. Um, but it kept breaking on me every three months and I was not willing to pay an extra $500 a month just to keep it running and then not have access to my car all the time because it was in the shop so much. So traded it in, got the RAV4, um, which I love. I currently have a, um, 2002 kind of like Escalade. Mm-hmm. And I love it. It gets like zero miles of a gallon. Uh, if I baby it, I can get 17. I mean, like an Escalade would be perfect for Michigan. Like you would have no issues with anything. Just, just go. So, so ice might be an issue, but you, once you learn how to, how to deal with ice, it's really easy. Um, 
This is actually yeah, my we first have car. black ice everywhere. This is actually my first car. Yeah. So if if you know how to deal with black ice, then you're good with it. All the rest of ice. Ice is ice. Whether what color it is, I don't care. I usually discover ice when I discover I'm sliding, and I'm like, okay, I know how to get out of this, and then I get out of it, and it's fine. Well, that's my point. In black ice, you don't know it's there. <laughs> well, the, you know it's there when you start sliding. Mm, true. And and then you just deal with it. I drove this, my dad's car, which, I mean, it's actually a really nice car. The one he has has leather. It was like a 96 or 98. Mm -hmm. Right. And had leather interior and everything. It was a nice car, but it wasn't my car. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know if I would have a car to drive or not that day because, oh, well, your dad needs it because he's actually got to go into work today or um, it's in the shop. So your dad's other car's in the shop. So it was really nice. My parents actually surprised me with this. They got a super good deal on it. I prayed for this car. Like, I really mm -hmm. did. And yeah. it had 6,000 miles, mm -hmm. I think. Or 8,000 miles, something. It was super low. Yeah, I am going to click over 200,000 in my RAV4 before the end of the year. Wait, no, okay. Let me back up. They paid $6,200. It had 86,000 miles. Okay. That's what it was. I mean, I was like, wait, that's not at all right. But they got a super good deal on it. And because under 100,000 miles mm -hmm. for that cheap. And it's 2002. It had never been wrecked or anything. Now it's survived through a tornado and it has a side view mirror from a suburban that is not the same color, but. Mm -hmm. It works. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's say last last year I got rear-ended in my RAV4 and I had to get the entire back end redone. Um, so that was less than preferable. But they, they matched the paint up pretty good. But the parking garage where I have to park, um, the people there don't know how to drive either and they especially don't know how to park. And they really, really, really don't know how to open their doors without banging them into my car. Mm. So... <laughs> complications arose and now my and now my pristine rav4 has a bunch of dents and bangs all over it but i really don't care as long as the engine is still good i'll drive it till it dies i'm hoping to get another hundred thousand miles out of it hopefully so three years <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really i mean <laughs> as long as the engine runs mm -hmm. and i don't have to worry about breaking down in the middle of any of nowhere mm -hmm. I'm good because um it, at this point I don't care if somebody like bumps into it and dents it a little bit because it's you know it made it through a tornado it's I right. it's right <laughs> it's got some scrapes and dings it, there's a story there <laughs> I'm actually. This is, it's not terrible, but, oh yeah, I forgot that it broke the window. This was the bulk of the damage from the tornado. And then there's some, like to my car, I should mm -hmm. say, because there was, we had over 40 trees down on our property. That's not bad. Looks like mm -mm. your windshield took a little bit of a whack to it, but. Yeah, and then there's some places down through here. The biggest thing is the paint is chipping, and I mean, it's gradually in certain places getting a little bit bigger, but. I mean, you can just get some touch up and fix that if, you, or if you're bothered by it. I get people who are a lot more bothered about the condition of my vehicle than I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, I I don't care. I'm like, you know what? The inside looks clean and it doesn't smell like sour carpet. So, you know, that's a plus. Actually, it occurs to me. I actually have a uh, letter I got from Toyota recently about 
there being a recall on the paint job on my RAV4 that all I have to do is take it in there and they'll fix it for me. <laughs> I might do that this week since I have such abundant time that I've never had before. Uh -huh. <sighs> <laughs> you really should. Just go, just, hey, I've got some free time. Let's go get a paint job. <laughs> I mean, why not, really? I mean, honestly, it would cost more for me to get a paint job on my car than my vehicle's worth. That's fair. So, I'm just... It's Ooh, fine. Have you ever considered getting your, your vehicle wrapped? <laughs> I've seen some wrapped vehicles. What would you suggest? I'm, I'm bringing something up right now. Give me a second. Hold on. <laughs> I have the perfect thing. I'm holding on. The only the only wrap which should ever be this no nope, not that I need I need a I need a properly sized picture so I can do this justice. There we go. But the perspective is off. How can it come Oh, wait, there we go. Nope. Tiny picture. Come on. Give me there we go. Yes. Oh. Oh yes. <laughs> Everything is better wrapped in bacon. Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on, I've not looked at it yet. What is oh wait no what <sighs> cringe. Because everything is better wrapped in bacon. Uh, and this was not what I was looking for, but since it's here, apparently everything <laughs> is better wrapped in bacon. Even a <laughs> crocodile even an alligator eating a chicken is better wrapped in bacon. <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> Florida, go home. You're drunk. <laughs> like, and you, like, you don't even have to ask. This is Florida. No it's question. No it's Florida. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, this conversation took a crazy turn. Oh, my goodness. Uh. <sighs> No, see, around here we have. Um, I gotta get off this bacon page because I'm gonna get hungry. Okay. Around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I gotta find a good picture that does it justice. Around here, we know. Oh, sorry. Um. Oh, I gotta get. Oh. Okay. Um, so my, my aunt dropped by today and she lives in, um, someplace and she, uh, dropped off some of her, her spoils from her time here in Michigan because when she came to Michigan for was to go hunting and the place where she lives, they don't really care for, for venison, but I do. And so she dropped me off a legitimate freezer full of venison. And I am a very happy person. And now I have a near irrepressible desire to wrap some of that venison in bacon. <laughs> uh. Because that just sounds like wisdom to me. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I just had a great idea. I said great idea. So I'm going to get, um, I'll figure out what kind of cheese, but I'm going to get some cheese. I'm going to put that, I'm going to put the, put that, um, cold on, on the venison, wrap that in bacon and bake it. Mm. I'll figure okay. Out, I'll figure out what kind that of cheese. That is a lot of venison. So this doesn't do it justice because I have seen way better or worse. Uh, whatever you want to, um, in person. And this is just off the internet. But this is what we call a wrap job around here. Okay. I, say, I don't know if that's actually a wrap or if that's just it's a spray, spray paint. paint. Yeah. It's spray paint, yeah. most definitely. And it's more common than not around here. Mm hmm. Okay. This is just, if this does not. Okay, define the South. I only see tires. Sass. Uh, if this good. doesn't... Yes, he is. 
if this does not define redneck around here, then I don't know what does. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, man. I mean... <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow. We also... I mean... <laughs> I guess you could technically also call this a a rap job. Let's see. Especially when you see something that looks like that on this like mm -hmm. on the road driving. <laughs> yeah. Actually that looks a lot like my pastor's car, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> he lives in a dirt road and doesn't know the meaning of the word car wash. At the car wash. Don't. Uh, at the car wash, yeah. You you said don't. No, I, hold on. No. Stop growling at me, you demonic <laughs> creature. I just realized where I learned how to do that from. Wow. <laughs> where did you learn how to do that from? My uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Here we go. Oh no, Here no, we go. no, 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 no. What in no. the world? I'm sending this just because you yes. objected. Why? Yes. Why? Why? Uh, why? Why? No. Why? 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 Uh, <laughs> And then he sends me one that we're definitely not going to put on the podcast. Wow. <laughs> Bad Sasquatch. Wait a second. That's also me. Turn it. <laughs> Somewhere on the internet, there is a Tempted page called Bad Sasquatch, which might have something to do with me once upon a time, but I'm no really one will ever know. I, I have a feeling that I'm going to never admit it. Um, yes. Just admitted it, my friend. Nope. <laughs> I had every bit of deniability was built into that statement somewhere may or may not be possibly. Yep. There's no admission in there whatsoever. I'm agging it on. <laughs> Communist <laughs> church. <laughs> I'm agging on the other one that he posted. Oh, that's great. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> For those who are listening in and are not part of the Discord, you can join the Discord. There's some good stuff happening in there. Like this is this is just where we are now. You all need to be in there just to get a uh, just to have a, a fleeting understanding of what's going on. Um, <laughs> of the chaos that's happening. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Oh my goodness! So what's oh the irony of this is the picture I sent of my sumo wrestler squishy thing. Mm -hmm. It, so it looks like he's squatting. Um, I have a sticker that, you know, came from Children's Church, the nursery department, that somebody just stuck on me last night at the lock-in that says I'm potty training. And he's actually on top of that. <laughs> so have you ever encountered a squatty potty? Oh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that was not something that was unique to me. That was a unique day or a unique, no, unique, unique time. Yeah. Unique time. Um, yeah, China's, a great, China's a great place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there or visit again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or visit again. Good to know. Once was enough. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> This probably isn't that fun. probably isn't that funny, but like I was just curious, which I which is dangerous because curiosity killed the cat. Okay, so apparently someone but, someone liked episode four. Uh, I, I, I I admit that all my opinions are just my opinions and should not be considered to be anything above above and beyond that. Sorry, um, just because I'm going to post something in here, then I felt that this clearly was necessary. Go ahead. Sorry for interrupting you. That, I'm gonna go behind my mouth now. Okay. 
Well, uh, the thing I found, I just, I literally just searched Squatty Potty because mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure we were on the same page, which we were. Okay. And this is the f- first thing that came up. It's, <laughs> and the comic in this is just, okay. The, the meerkat ferret thing was cool. I'm just going to leave this right here and not say anything else about it. Uh, just let you look at it. Oh, Lord. <sighs> this podcast has taken an interesting turn. Time to break out some... Well, it would, I don't know. With this, we can probably say that the time has come to break out the... Uh... uh <laughs> <laughs> the Haribo sugar free gummy bears. Um, <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Oh. Hmm. Okay, so talking about Mando again. Yes. There were some very good highlights in the episode and good attributes that they did bring and present during the episode. Mm hmm. Because the lead up to what's going to happen next and with how that actually and how they brought back the. uh, I don't know his name or anything, but the guy who was doing the experiments to get the blood transfusion and all of that stuff, the way they presented that again and why they needed the child was really clever Mm -hmm. and i feel like they had a really good storyline but the stuff in the middle like instead of putting peanut butter and jelly they put peanut butter and mayonnaise and it just did not flow well oh (laughs) i don't know why that's the analogy that i decided to use to describe that but it is so you're welcome okay I'd say I'm not a fan of either of those two things. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you don't like peanut butter. Uh, Meanwhile, I'm sitting here snacking on peanuts. Like I have honey roasted and dry roasted sitting mm-hmm. right in front of me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I just feel like the the meat of the story, like the storyline was great, but everything in between was just choppy and I did not like it but the little things that they implemented about the characters like her having this new little furry friend and the way they brought in um the resistance with her story at the end of that Mm -hmm. and where she was from and everything I think they did a really good job with that but yeah. Hmm. So, yes. Any comments, or am I just talking? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just processing right now. I'm still, I'm still processing, uh, the the poop thing. <laughs> like I, I've, I've heard of this before, but I've never seen that particular graphic. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it scarred me. So I was like, I have to share this. Well, you've now scarred at least one more. <laughs> and probably Sasquatch, too. He's he's probably writing a very insightful response to them right now. <laughs> it's a shame no one's going to be able to read it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm... Gets... <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, the, like, this is, go ahead. This is the reason that I will... Not be allowed back on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> reasons like this. There's a very good possibility you're going to be allowed again uh, next week. So that's all <laughs> kind of a moot point already. Yeah, true. I mean, I do feel like we've had. I could continue to talk, you know, me as long as forever. But... Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. It has been four hours. 
Yes, it has been. Is it? Is that? Is that the uh, the cutoff here for tonight? I don't know. Is it? Well, let's see. We talked. We talked about the important things. We got D and D in. Uh, we got, I, we kind of talked about the Muppets too, because I got to reference Dr. Teeth. So there you go. The Muppets are in there. Talked about Star Wars, talked about the Mandalorian, talked about, um, uh, cars for a long time. Talked about bacon. Bacon's always good. Bacon. Um, talked about painting. We talked about, wow, just all the Chotskys and, and, and Roombas and Claymores and, um, directors and squatty bugs potties and squatty potties and tarantulas <laughs> and oh i still have to watch that matthew west video and we talked about singing and being ducking mad and <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and dessert and microphones i think we've got everything possible in there. <laughs> Uh, we've been talked about some random animals and bad pickup lines. <laughs> we did. We most certainly did. Oh. Well, uh, well then I, I would say that you have done very well for your first podcast appearance. Um, thank you, Broke Butt, um, for, for stepping in when Masters has abandoned us in the wilds of Florida. Goes to Disney World. I need to send oh. him the picture of that... Uh, uh, alligator wrapped in bacon and tell him if he doesn't send me back a picture of him eating that that he has not actually been in Florida <laughs> <laughs> uh, no see that's the Florabama portion of Florida he's in the city slicker portion of Florida <laughs> you know you can try and put Alabama in Florida but there is a whole extra degree of crazy that happens in Florida that Alabama has nothing to do with <laughs> oh yeah you're right <laughs> like, no, we're not gonna get on Florida man. We can get on Florida man next time. Let's <laughs> let's ra- try and wrap this up here. So, uh, again, thank you for being a part of this podcast, broke butt. Um, you can anyone who is uh, figure out how to phrase this properly. Anyone who would like to hear her vocal stylings should uh, go um, check out uh, Monkey DKS, Mumbles of a Nerd, The Real Friendly X. Um, any of those will be places where you can find her um, sporadically or at different times throughout the week or as she fills in bit parts or we will figure all that out um, sort of thing. Um, we are currently masters although he was here in spirit, I suppose, maybe, possibly, not at all. Floridian. And we are going to be having uh, again our podcast, our another episode up next week. So if you'd be so kind, please like, comment, share, especially share. Share is how we uh how we grow this thing, how we get more people involved, and how we uh just keep growing and growing and growing. So thank you all for tuning in for watching. Any last words, broke butt? Um, if you have made it through this much of me talking and carrying on random conversation congratulations and thank you for letting me join in on the world's worst podcast adventure <laughs> i mean wow every single every one of the three comments that i had was very very mean I need to think better before I start to talk. <laughs> like, wait a second, I can't, nope, can't say it, nope, can't, nope, can't, nope. Can't. <laughs> like, I'm the, not sure that I want to come next week. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't say them, I just said that they were there, you know. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily that they were, tr- like, truthfully mean, it's just that, you know, potentially they could be taken that way. Yeah, um, yeah, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. Anyway, um, yes, thank you for being a part of this. You, you really uh, helped me along because, I mean, I can talk for four hours, but really nobody wants to listen to me talk just straight for four hours. I'm quite sure. And, and I, we talked tonight about how I enjoyed the, the experiencing the sound of my own voice. I don't want to hear me talk for four hours. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> I want to come back next week. I mean, considering the fact that we have 
surreptitiously made plans to spend multiple hours in the coming week probably just talking again because we're totally going to watch a movie. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, you got nowhere to talk on that run. So thank you all for watching. We will talk to you, speak to you, something or other to you. Probably bore you to tears. Next time, goodbye. See ya.